Hello everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Before we get into our session tonight, we do have some announcements to get through, beginning with our first sponsor, which is Quip. Sam? It's me, Ludo McGillicuddy. <laughs> Welcome back to the Quip Public Domain Lounge. Is there something different about you, Ludo? I can't believe you noticed, Mork. It's really hard to miss. Uh, you've really blossomed into something special. Well, yes, my mouth is cleaner thanks to Quip's new rechargeable Cordless water flosser. <laughs> it's an easy to control water flow that leaves you squeaky clean. Five dollar replacement floss tips shipped every three months if you know what I mean. Thank you. Uh, that's a nice song, <laughs> but I, I, I actually meant how you're, you're you're turning into a sunflower. I what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, if, if your body's going through some changes, it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, that's you're a be. piece of work, Man Ray. You know that. <laughs> the only change I. I've gone through is using this water flosser, which blasts away pollen. I mean plaque with precision. <laughs> with a with a 360 degree <laughs> rotating magnetic floss tip. <laughs> Hit all the right spots with the touch of a button, yep. Oh, that, was, that, was, that was also a very fine song, Ludo. It's just, look, your stem is really great. <laughs> And those petals, you should really be proud of the words. <laughs> be proud of how you look, man. Uh, Ixnay on the hour flay, Magic 8 Ball, okay? Look, I don't understand what's wrong. If Quip finds out that I'm slowly becoming a flower, they're going to drop me as their spokes crooner. Flowers don't have teeth. Look, I'm sure I'll understand. Hey, Maybe I could take over the gig for you. Mm, nobody wants that, Mr. Mustard. Well, until next time, folks, it's me, the very human Ludo McGillicuddy, wishing you good flossing and reminding you to get 20% off a Quip water flosser when you go to getquip.com slash critical floss. Plus, save an extra 20% on already discounted bundles. I have very human teeth because I'm a human man. I don't self-pollinate because I'm not a flower. Bye-bye. Hi, Matt. Uh, uh, uh oh, I seem to be stuck. It's your, uh, it's your roots. Oh my god. I'm not a flower, Manchigo cheese. I just. Manchigo. <sighs> I'm actually, I'm actually kind of thirsty. Can you, can you, can you water me? I don't want to. Can you please? Oh boy. No. Thank you. Water aim, my body. Aim for a stick. Oh! oh yes. So refreshing. Oh yes. Matt, back to you. <laughs> I can't leave though because I'm I'm rooted to the spot, so I'm just gonna have to stay here. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll pluck you. <laughs> this episode is also sponsored by Thorum. Don't show that. Up. Sit down, Sam. Sit down. <laughs> You can't show Steamin' on Twitch. Let's get this sit right here. Oh. Oh. Please, can we Photoshop in like, like some flowers. flower blooms? Oh my god. Oh. This episode is also sponsored by Thorum, makers of handcrafted unique wedding bands. <laughs> Made out of everything from meteorites to whiskey barrels, right here in the US of A. Oh Thorum has been making rings for 10 years now, and they take great pride in its amazing customer service, quality, and original designs, and not turning into sunflowers. Every single purchase includes a free silicon activity band and a wooden ring box. Bop, bop, bop. Uh, so when you need to take the ring off and do stuff, you don't <laughs> damage it. Plus, uh, they make the process as easy as possible by offering ring sizers that you can just go ahead and get sized at home. So whether you need a wedding band, an anniversary ring, or you just want a ring that looks awesome, like one of these, head on over to thorum.com and use promo code CRITICALROLL, one word, to get 20% off a truly unique an epic ring. Epic ring. Uh, Sunflower Man. I have to do another ad. <laughs> I like how nervous the sunflower makes you. Know? It always shakes just a little bit. You <laughs> I, was, I was holding a, a semi squat over there because I didn't want people to see my wang. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I can see it. <laughs> hey, we've got another sponsor tonight, D&D Beyond. Bring the War of the Lance to your table and become the hero that Crean needs. Play a Kender and follow your curiosity for adventure and mischief. Join forces with the legendary Knights of Solomnia. Nope, Solmnia, maybe. Or, <laughs> or the Mages of High Sorcery. Imbue your powers with Lunar Magic. 
from Crean's three Grand, Grand, Grand. Crean's three <laughs> mystical <laughs> moons with an all new lunar sorcery subclass. Fight against legendary villains like Lord Soth and face legions of draconians, dragons, and other servants of the Dragon Quinn. It's Quinn, right? Or yeah. Queen? Okay, you can purchase Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen today at dndbeyond.link slash crdragonlance. Dope. Thank you, buddy. Laura, you got a couple things to talk about too, I believe? <clears throat> yep. <laughs> We've got a t shirt! I should have. <laughs> Oh, the beauty yeah. of Exandria in motion collection. Whoa. It's Ashton Graymar, pa- Graymore, pocket T-shirt, yeah. and on the back it says, "Just don't, That's just, just, just don't." Just don't. Here you go, Tyler. Yeah. I actually already have one. But yeah. It's pretty have fabulous. Have we ever done a pocket tee before? The first yes. one. Yes, the first one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> it's not that so this is part of the Beauty of Xandra, the Archives Collection. Ooh, it's a thing? journal sticker set. Ooh. Art by Grace Berrios. Look, um, because we've been wanting stickers that could go in our journals, and we by have all we, these journals, but yes. Are those um, <laughs> no, they're like little misters really and little <laughs> frumpkins. Oh my god. And there's all sorts of things. There's little pâtés. And then you've got these little ones that you can write your own stuff Ooh. in. There's I know that I shouldn't show off every single one of these things, but there's these ones and these ones and there's all really cute. Go to the website and check them out because I love I these and they are oh, cards and I know, right? They're little like little bits to play with. Ooh. This is look at all of these stickers. It comes with so many stickers. They'll be so great for journaling or for scrapbooking or for sticking on things. Mm-hmm. Like your son putting them on your forehead. Yes, yes very much. There's Captain Tusk Dudes. <laughs> oh my God. Go check them out. Oh my God. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. <laughs> I think that actually <laughs> brings us to the end of our announcements. Ooh. So I think it's time for us to jump into tonight's episode <laughs> of <laughs> Critical Role. <laughs> Till we reach the top, two by two we fall. Will we meet our friend or meet our destiny? Hold your breath and roll. How do you want to do this? It's Thursday night. All ye critters, come join us. It's time to continue our flight. There is magic and mystery. Who knows what will happen? He might. We never give up on the fight From the healer to the renegade We all share the same goal Adding more allies, taking more chances Hold your breath and roll You can certainly try It's Thursday night All ye critters, come join us It's time to continue our Our friendship will rise But one thing's for sure We never give up on the fight Oh, get ready It's Thursday night And welcome back. So, Last we left off, Bell's Hells, in the wake of the loss of their friend and patron, Lord Eryx Eshteros, managed to uh, prove they were not responsible for his demise, as well as uh, agree to align the interests of Shishadri and the other members and or allies in and around the Quorum of Drusar to find the one responsible, which you are pretty sure is the same individual that you fear may be hunting you, or you might be hunting them. But regardless, you were left a skyship, as it seemed Estros was aware of his rapidly approaching fate. After acquiring the ship, you began to head to the southeastern direction to Aeshanador, in the city of Eos, the city of flowing light, where you have a few narrative threads to pursue, some figures you have been 
sent towards and some mysteries that seem to lead in that direction. In flying over, and choosing to fly over the Hellcatch Valley, a brief tussle with a chimera that seemed to be hunting a number of uh, cockatrices, uh, and then eventually heading into and over the gloomed jungles of a Shenador. <coughs> there you found what looked to be a ruin of some sort of a, a military tower. And with the information that you had received from Ajit Dial, you, Chetney, in seeking the Gorgine, the sect of blood hunters that focus on controlling the beast of lycanthropy within, the group has stopped at your behest. And here you howled at dusk in hopes that they would hear you. And hear you, they did. <laughs> Along this journey, you did make a uh, sending stone call to our good friend Dorian, oh, um, who did reply retroactively. Oh, oh. oh Orem. My heart aches that I cannot be there to help you. Find strength. Stay steadfast. I'm sending you fairer winds. Is this thing on? Or <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got a good voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good voice. <laughs> wow. You can listen to every book. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Upon being nearly ambushed by the Gorgine, you prove to not be an antagonistic force to their ventures in life out here. And upon proving yourself to be one who has some training with Hemocraft and wrestling this beast within, they agreed to take you to their hidden village. Hidden village they refer to as Baranak. Here you were introduced to a number of the civilians that also uh, land of the protection of the Gorgine, themselves carrying ly lycanthropic cur curse themselves. There we go. That's a phrase and a half there. Um, so I appreciate the support, yeah. Laura. Uh, <laughs> I'm impressed. Oh, thank you. Um, and upon discussing your interests, the short time frame you have, and the recent unexpected control over your transformation that the Ruddy Moon Ruidus previously did not have. Uh, you are guided to the possibility of undergoing a trial within a, a specific location, not far from where they stay, known as Zavrolo, the Temple of the Savage Heart. It is believed that Sayadan, which is a one of the numerous bestial spirits that claims parts of this landscape, their home and their domain, resides there. It is a holy site in which the Gorgine have taken it as part of their own meditations and rituals and various important training activities in dealing with their own challenges. So, you were given a place to stay for the night, and underneath the rainfall of the evening, you all Found rest, so mm -hmm. you can complete a long the, rest. We threw the portable hole mm -hmm. against the side of the tree yeah. and made it, it sideways. And you held on yep. to you of us. Zavrolo. 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 Yes. <laughs> Baranak. Yeah, we, we have our... <laughs> Cor correcting my phonetic <laughs> disaster over here. Because I've never <laughs> So we might be going, we might have like some sort of a trial. Is that right? Tomorrow? Or he, he. Right, I think Chet will have a, a trial, yeah. What are you looking at, Jenny? Your destiny. But fuck it! Don't take it! <laughs> <laughs> Shit! I gotta think of some other killer one liner. <laughs> I could be on for hours. Killer, it's okay. I, honestly, I feel like I saved you on that one. <laughs> that would feel bad. Damn. It's raining and dark. Fuck! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. I'm stoked. I'm amped. Are you? It yeah. seems like most of the wearers here are a little bit younger, uh -huh. more, you know. Wet behind the ears, amateurish. I was thinking the same thing. Oh, you have to show them how it's done. Good. Show me the fucking leaderboard. Time for a new name to go up top. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you winking at? I'm setting the tone right now by destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Coming around. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh, just covered up my nerves. 
Did, did you say that out loud? Say what out loud? <laughs> <laughs> Off to a great start. Is it, wait, is it's it still morning? nighttime time or is it morning? Right? What? No, we got a long rest, Matt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We are now getting a long rest. Okay, okay. 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 okay I thought Thank we got a long rest. Okay. I wasn't sure when you guys were jumping in, if okay, it was so before we'll night or morning okay. of, but. I'm carbo loading and getting a long rest. Okay. <laughs> long rest. Well, didn't um. Forms uh, are gone. <laughs> Stop! Devashila mentioned we'd be there to like assist you, right? Yeah, yeah. Like a pit crew, if not more. So maybe we'll a be pit crew like fighting alongside of you. Hype men, cheering you on. Sidekicks? Who knows? Be ready for anything, though. Like we always are. We rode the. Yeah, but if this is really like a trial put in place by some sort of spirit, anything could happen. Maybe all of us will turn into werewolves. Or war wear boars. Or wear bears. That would be incredible. That's yeah. interesting. What would we be? It's who bites you? Or whatever. Would you want is it whatever bites you? Or is like if something choose? bites you? Yeah, does it just like come out in your blood? Let's like I'm um, internally. A... Let's go around. Okay. Ashton? Well, I mean, clearly I would have to go with some sort of heavy reptile because it's the only thing that would make sense with, ooh, with the, uh, with like the, the complexion. So, rather, you know, like an alligator or something like that. Uh, you know? Um, yeah, you are. I guess I go with a rabbit. Solid. A were rabbit? A were rabbit. Were rabbit. Are you allowed to do. <laughs> are we allowed to be things that are not actually predators? I don't know how it works. I mean, aware her before. I'll, I'll, co I'll consult the spirit of this realm and get back to you. <laughs> Imogen? I, I mean, I would say a werehorse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, nay. Is that that just a centaur? So <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be, or. Like I'm trying to imagine what it would actually look like. Just a horse head on. Maybe like body. you wouldn't a actually be able to walk up right, so you'd just be like. You just bow jack. Yeah. A horse head <laughs> with the most beautiful purple mane. <laughs> You're just a My Little Pony at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like that. Even that, it's gone wrong. Even for My Little you know. Pony. Yeah. And consult your spirits. Let me know if that's We're acceptable. In perception yeah. spotty. The rain fucks it up. I mean, I'd probably be like a, like a a werequoka. Oh, yeah. Or like you know, a werebearer. Mm. What is it? What's that? A bearer? Like were capybara. Capybara. Oh, right. oh thank you. Werebearer. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Werebearer. 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 Take a shit for the cuddly over here. Okay. Yeah. FCG, well, so get us good. right back on the meat eating path. I, I had. The, I came prepared. <clears throat> Oh, my. A wear bass. A wear bass. Oh, the wear bass. Yes. Oh, yes. I want to feel the water again. Why does it look like it has red hair? Because that's the fur of the wear bass. <laughs> oh, because oh. that's the werewolf part. Yeah. How scary. Got it. I can't. No. Mm. Well, that's good. What about you, Imogen? I mean, like, did you just pull a mat and call me Imogen? Yeah. Yep. yep. Amazing. <laughs> it's catching. <laughs> so shit. Oh no. <laughs> Nervous are we? I mean, I guess like um, a wear rat, but like a big rat. Oh. You no, know, so I could roll with pate. Like a where are you s? Ooh. Yes. Like a dire, yes. dire rat. Where dire, where dire at? Where dire at? Where dire at? Where where dire at? Where dire at? Oh my god! Wow, what is happening? Right now? Oh, 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 sorry, I just heard it. Everything <laughs> death and drama people come for. Yeah. Well, this is this is the conversation happening from within the tree hole through yeah. the rain overnight as you're trying to sleep, and there's like the weird thoughts start intruding. Oh, don't even lie, you guys playing D and D at home. You've totally wondered what hot <laughs> werewolf-like <laughs> rope you turn into. Huh? No, you do it. Our audience is super horny. Let's be honest. This is super authentic. Yep. Well, and this this actually begs a good question. You got bit by a werewolf. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so and you turned into a werewolf. So it's not like I did. It's the beast it, chose me. Hmm. I guess we could talk to who was the hot one. 
Hang on. Oh yeah, hot one was um, um, green eyes. Uh, the tiger? <coughs> no. Minot. Yeah, no, Minot. 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 Maybe we could talk to Minot and be like, did he get yeah. bit by a wet panther? Yeah, sure. Or did that just yeah, yeah. manifest inside? Wait, what was your? Oh yeah, you were the fish. Live just to be clear, you shouldn't. If it happens, you shouldn't seek out I getting know. bit because you know normally you have to be bit and then stop the rest of the biting process what? that leads to your death. Right, because yeah. it would just. Just eat your ass. But unless it's like, nibble. couldn't you no. just bite us, and then we would become a werewolf? Well, I mean, yes, but and you, you wouldn't be like losing control or anything. You would just be doing it, you know. So a single bite can turn you, or like, just a single bite can turn can turn you. Yeah. Well, how do you get? How do you? So what's the difference between like biting someone and then you kill them, and then biting them and then they turn? Yeah, if you bite someone and then you kill them, they're dead. And okay. then if you just bite them and they get away, then they have the potential to turn. I the see. potential. Do you have to break the skin? Yes. All right. I can't just like. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe your saliva yeah, is poison. Yeah. So you could you could kiss an, another person without sure turning could. them. It's oh not, yeah. It's not saliva. Have you kissed anyone for since you've actually? a solid hour, you can kiss all you want. Transformation by Hickey. A solid hour, just oh. kiss. I'm. I got at least a solid hour in that form. You bet. <laughs> That's the rules. It's true, it's mechanically sound. <laughs> what if you haven't finished by then? Oh, wow. Well, you know, d- disappointment. <laughs> As the morning fog has, has taken the majority of the surrounding jungle air, you all come to consciousness in your cold, somewhat damp tree interior. Looking out, you can see the uh, the drops of the rain that's still filtering down through the treetops and canopy, just kind of dripping past the opening. Uh, you can see the shapes of the various little huts and constructed homesteads of Baranak. The shadow kind of through the fog, the shapes almost giving a, uh, a dreamlike visage as you hear the sound of heavy axe falls on wood. A couple of voices in the distance. Looks like the village is awake in its own right and dealing with its morning chores. You're all a bit stiff from just being not in as comfortable sleeping space as you're used to, but the day is yours. You know, we could just fill that hole up with like mattresses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like along the sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really hard to be. dry out a bit, or else they're going to get all moldy, though. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like, hard to yeah. sleep on a curve. Yeah. <laughs> Being on a white site. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll hop out and take a look around. You hop out and you see some of the the civilians kind of like stopping and glancing as you make yourself briefly known here in the morning air, and they go back to their errands. You do see there is a pile of looks to you the packs that are kind of been placed out by one of the larger fire pit circles of stones, uh, and you see. Uh, Uvello, the dragonborn, the green scale dragonborn, and uh, Minad both over there, kind of packing materials for the day's journey. Uvello. Uh... Are we up? Are we moving? I'm going to, just because I love seeing if this damages things, once we're all out, I'm going to try and wring the, the portable hole out, see if I can get some of the moisture out. Give it a good. Uh, oddly, it didn't take much moisture. It feels pretty dry to the touch. That's great. All right. I'll uh, wander over to the, the campfire, just real casually. Over to you, Velo. Morning! Good morning. Uh, are you and your compatriots ready to um, make the journey eastward? Oh, I think so. I mean, uh, do, do we need to, do we have a, a time to get a bite down, or is it, is it game time? Um, well, we can definitely feast a bit before the journey. You will need to keep your energy up, but uh, the sooner we leave, the best chance we have of finding a good place to camp for the night. Oh, that, that makes sense. What are all the, are these packs for us? Looks like Minad kind of like finishes putting the, the let's say the lid, the flap over one of these and kind of lashing it up and goes, that's correct, we're, um, look like we're rolling about five deep outside of you just to keep everyone safe, so. He's rolling five deep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, it's fucking hot. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll go back over to the hole. Let me, let me rally. 
Uh, we're we're going to try and get out early this morning so we have a chance to find a good place to make camp for the night before we lose the light. I'm ready. Let's let's get, let's get going. We can eat on the road. All right. You do gather your things, and there is there is a collection of just kind of like dried tack and meat that they have prepped kind of universally for the trip if anybody needed it, but you know, not not enough to feed all of you, but enough that if a few people didn't have enough rations for the journey, they could probably fill the gap. Um, but with that, you have Manad, Yuvelo, uh, Annalyn, or uh, you know, uh, Divashila, which was the other name you were given initially from uh, Ajit. Um, as well as the uh, a female dwarf, which you had seen was the kind of transformed werewolf when you first arrived, and Uther, who was the older human, who was the werebore. Uther, Manad, the werebear we don't have the name of yet. Wait, the, the dwarf was the a dwarf wolf? The dwarf was the bear, I thought. No, because the dragonborn was the werewolf. That's what I wrote down. There was Sheila? But there was a tiger that? wolf? There were, there, there were technically there were two werewolves in the group. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So the Luther there was a werebore, mm. and there was a female dwarf who was one of the werewolves. Okay, yeah. got it. But the werebear so. we don't have yet. Correct. Bella, yeah. Minad, Annalyn, Uther. Yep. And we don't know the name of the. I'll say you probably in the evening probably would have gotten the name uh, uh, Frestio. 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 Frestio as the dwarf. But they've all kind of, within a short time this morning, put on their travel armor, put on their tools, put on their cloaks, uh, gathered the materials. They all each pick up the packs that have kind of been set in the pile, and the energy amongst the crew is that they're pretty much ready to move forward. Is everyone prepped? Is there anything you wish to do before you head out? How long did they say this trip to um, Zavrolo is going to be? Uh, about one and a half to two days, depending. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, we I need to communicate that to the ship. Oh, that's a good idea. Wow. Well, yeah. What were you thinking? Um, yeah, that's a good idea. I should <laughs> let them know that. We should have done that last night. Who oh, will? <laughs> I thought we did last night. Yeah, time. we definitely did. Sure did. <laughs> you had an extra spell slot before you went to bed last night. I could allow it. It's okay, fine. okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, then we sent them a message saying, it's going to be a few days. <laughs> yeah, let's Hang finish. tight. Don't get in trouble. All right, that's okay. We got plenty of card games. It's going to be a good time. Uh, get back safe, don't die. <laughs> um, Unless there's someone else, somewhere else to wrangle su supplies around here, which I really don't think there is. It doesn't seem like it. Glancing about, it looks like most everyone here has what they need to survive uh, comfortably within the village, but there isn't like a there isn't rousing commerce present here in Baranak. Most everything here is. You know, stretched leathers and materials and tools. For an art festival, I can buy some local jewelry. Maybe they'll be back. All right. <laughs> an art festival. Yeah, some, some food. Craft fair? Yeah, food stalls. With that, you see uh, Annalyn puts her pack up and kind of puts a short bow over her shoulder, goes ahead and kind of taps the side of her hip where the hammer is also slung over in like a leather harness that goes across the other shoulder. And there's like a large hammer on one shoulder and the short bow on the other. Looks at the rest of you, you see with the kind of the, the tangled hair and stuff kind of damp from the, the moisture, the surrounding fog and mist, kind of like it brushes it back a bit and looks at the rest of you with her piercing eyes. All right, are we good to go? Yeah, you're rolling five deep, seven on our side. That makes us a where dozen. Mm-hmm. We'll workshop it. That would be a very good idea, yes. All right, well, come, follow quickly. If you fall behind, yell. And the crew begins to go into kind of a moderate jog toward the eastern side of the village. Fuck, I didn't know we'd be joking. Cardio, man. She's doing the cardio all the way through the woods? Oh, fuck. God damn it. The dense jungle. Immediately greets you. Um, <laughs> yeah. The evening before, when you were traveling at a brisk, brisk, brisk pace, being kind of chaperoned by the Gorgine through, it was a continuous series of thick shadowed trees and uh, just following in their steps for safety. They seem to have an eye out for uh, the challenges and various opportunities to injure oneself, and were kind of watching for you as you went. Now that you have a lot more. Comparative visualization on the jungle around you, it is oddly alien 
and beautiful. As the fog still keeps the trees at a distance, these kind of shadowed pillars that slowly come to form as you move forward, kind of following their brisk pace. Uh, you can hear the sound of the various uh, birds and creatures that live up amongst the canopies and the occasional insect that kind of <laughs> just coasts by your ear. But these trees themselves have this kind of pale, blanched, bark-like color, the uh, majority of them. And along its base, this thicker black, dark gray like bark that just smoothly looks to climb up, almost like it's some sort of a an oily symbiote that is just kind of like wrapping up the tree. Uh, uncertain if this is a separate uh, kind of symbiotic entity or if this is just part of its exterior protective uh, shell, but these trees, these trunks, all have their own unique patterns. They twist upward, the branches themselves kind of reaching outward, these long, thin, almost bony extensions like fingers that reach out and hold up these vast canopies of, of dull grays and dark, deep purples. You can see the leaves as they fall and scatter the ground. It's hard to tell which are in different states of decay based on just the spread of odd and muted colors. You can see there are bursts of, of bright, vibrant reds and oranges at times, and as you kind of scoop by and glance, you can see there are these patches of fungus, these, these widespread mushroom caps, almost like a series of clustered umbrellas, and they have distinctly bright colorations that stand out amongst the environment. Whether that be to warn from being eaten or as an invitation, You'd have to eat one to find out. As we go by, can I just grab a, a little one and be like, Fern? Yes. Are these are these good to nibble on? Yes. <laughs> you were so quick with that answer. You must really know your fun guy. I do, I do. So do you want some? Sure. <laughs> oh my god. How does it taste? Bitter. I heard that dice. I heard that. Everybody roll. <laughs> yes, of course he like rolled. It. It's bitter. bitter. It's it tastes it tastes not good. Oh. Probably needs to be cooked. I probably need to roll. The flavor profile is okay. shifting a little bit. The, bit uh -huh. the bitterness is giving way to almost like a like a like a citrusy sting oh, on the back of the tongue. It's like a little bit like um like a little little bit of like a tangerine. <laughs> A little pepper. Cool. That's a little weird. My tongue feels so strange. Oh, I'd like you to make constitution savings. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It is um, uh, eight. Okay. Tongue's dead. That that like slightly kind of citrusy burning sensation just kind of begins to fill the inside of your. Chest. It's almost like a, like a, like a, like a straight bourbon. How it just burns its way oh, down it's and really through. Cool. Um, it's chest cavity. It's not. It's not uh, painful. It's not odd. Um, and as you're explaining this to Chetney, uh, you watch as his eyebrows kind of extend and wiggle a bit, <laughs> and his features almost seem to like stretch in odd ways. Oh. <laughs> Hey, what's the taste profile like? <laughs> oh. oh, I think you're turning already. You know what? I think I know exactly what this is. What is it? <laughs> 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 it um, <laughs> you look so crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna keep some of this for later because I think I know exactly what this is. <laughs> oh. Okay, are you coming? <laughs> okay, onward ho. <laughs> so, the combination of mist and quickly moving shadows seem to like stretch at times. Trees almost seem like they're rubber banding past you, and keeping pace, you feel this kind of giddy sensation, kind of billowing up within your stomach, and you find yourself having to like reach out and grab as you pull. Some of the uh, the Gorgini compatriots are kind of keeping an eye out, and you see Manad at one point kind of like catch your small of your back and go, "You all right?" Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> are you all right? Um, quite fine. I saw you eat one of them <laughs> mushrooms, and just want to make sure you're feeling okay. I am feeling so good. I'm sure you are. And um, you're, are you, did you want any? <laughs> Maybe when we get back. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, I'm gonna just stay about five, ten feet behind you, and you just keep moving. I'll just keep it up. Why so far? <laughs> I'm not yep. gonna do anything. <laughs> The uh, his his orcish complexion definitely darkened slightly as he kind of looks down. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, um, well, just for safety reasons. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that dangerous, but okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good idea. You see, he kind of like gives a nod and then kind of glances over, and you see Annalyn, who's kind of up above, looking behind, and he goes. Gives like a hand gesture to it. Yes, she does go over there. Just, we'll keep. We'll keep moving. We'll keep okay. Going. Okay. <laughs> kind of gives you a grin. Um, you are effectively poisoned for the next twenty-four hours. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> poisoned. That's fair. We are fucking poisoned. Wait, is this? This is not a magical effect, obviously. This is not a magical effect. This is just. This is just a shroom effect. Okay, so I'm just gonna. So it's disadvantage I'm, on all. Yes, I gave the druid mushrooms. Uh, disadvantage on all ability checks and attacks. Yeah. And attacks. Mm. Oh, cool. Oh, jeez. Well, somebody has fun. a means of getting rid of it. <laughs> Here we go. So, pressing through the area, you see more of these bursts of color. And the fungus does change, as well as some of the other like you know, local ferns and uh, flora that exists around the base of these trees. The roots tangle and twist, and in between them, you can see these sections of like, dark red uh, ferns and bush that seem to like, spread out, almost like they're like one singular bush entity that keeps reaching out further and kind of claiming its stake in the middle of this jungle. Uh, occasionally, you see the shadow of some sort of furred creature up in the boughs that kind of leaps away as soon as you end up making too much noise. Um, there's definitely a, a vibrant ecosphere here, and it is, is in beautiful in some ways, but also unsettling and kind of, not nightmarish, but just very, very unlike a natural space that you've walked through. Um, at times, it almost feels like some sort of a, like a grave shadow of a jungle. But everything here is alive and thriving, from what you can tell. And the smell is earthy and fresh, uh, not unlike the best after rain periods in the Odiran wilds or any of the surrounding woods or jungle of Marquette and beyond. Um, occasionally, you hear some sort of a distant call of some creature, and the Gorgine stop you, and and Lynn kind of looks outward. Sniffs the air for a second. You swear you see your features kind of just slightly extend into something slightly more feline before they recoil back into her, and she adjusts the path, and you begin to make a wider berth around. Um, for the first day of travel, since they are technically guiding you, um, it is their ability check. But I want someone to roll for the Gorgine that are guiding you towards the temple. Oh, Tar, you got it. Yeah. Get off. Yeah. yeah, you're the yeah. wolf. <laughs> Natural twenty. Yeah. That's how you start it. All righty. <clears throat> so. <laughs> the day progresses kind of in a, uh, a somewhat, I wouldn't say like quiet, you know, there's a little banter here and there, but everyone's definitely focused on the goal at this point. There's still kind of a, a slight gap of comfort, or at least a. Uh, a careful distance that the Gorgini keep from the majority of your troop, both to keep an eye on you and also just a lack of familiarity and a, a, not necessarily a strong eagerness to engage on anything personal. Um, but another moment does happen where Annalyn kind of stops everyone. Kind of looks around and you hear from one of the nearby boughs. <laughs> And you hear two more. And Annalyn goes, Well, it looks like we are being hunted by Twilight Tigers. Twilight? What? Tigers. And she kind of points up, and you see a kind of just, just barely visible up on one of the thick branches of the nearby trees above there. Mirror image. Mirror image on yourself? Yep. You see this. There's two images. This th <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there always? This, Inside all of it. This muscular but lithe-looking tiger, but the most most of its matted fur 
it, and it's same matter because it looks wet in places. It almost has like a like an oily, slick glimmer to the outside of its fur. It is a dark black to gray in places, and where there would be tiger stripes, there is a bright white. And it's almost like a negative imprint of a tiger from what you'd normally expect to see. Um, but the the lines themselves kind of push backward as opposed to up and around. And it gives almost like a frozen in mid leap or movement, like it has its own blur lines across it as it stands oh, okay. still and growls. And you see two more begin to kind of peer down as one kind of leaps down into a nearby bush. And Words of advice? Quadrupeds from what we can see? They're quadrupeds. At this point, you watch as Annalyn kind of transforms into her hybrid form, the tiger uh, physicality beginning to push through, those shoulders widening, the snout and teeth beginning to <laughs> bear, and Annalyn <laughs> growls back. You watch as Minad leaps onto one of the nearby trees, and <laughs> his whole body forms and cracks, you the bones reforming into the large panther aesthetic as he kind of claw claws his way up onto one of the branches, leans over his tail, <laughs> swinging as he <laughs> Every other member of the Gorgini go into their hybrid forms and kind of form a circle around your troop. Don't and you me. do the same. Oh. <laughs> I just put my hand out like Chris Pratt. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Easy girl. You got it. As they all kind of bear this line there around the sides, you now see five of these massive beasts. And as now as they get kind of somewhat close, they're still keeping about 20 feet from you, but gauging their distance near by trees, they probably are from uh, nose to tail, about 20 or so feet. What? They are massive. They look what? smaller at a distance, oh. and then they start to come out of the corners, and they are large beasts. At least the largest that you can see nearby is about that size. Um, the others begin to curl around, and you do see the other ones are a little bit smaller than that main one. And you get the sense this might be like a family, or at least a, a, some, some adolescent ones that are traveling with some sort of parent. Aww. As the growls continue, because you're rolling natural 20. Uh, the Gorgine, with Annalyn as a leader, kind of leans forward and <laughs> growls, and you watch as the largest one kind of <laughs> and then begins to stalk away, and it circles around the other four, and they all, as a troop, begin to just disperse back into the mists, and within 15 seconds, it's like they were never there. They just <laughs> leap off into the distant horizon of the uh, the tree line, where the fog just swallows their shadowed forms. Cool. I can only do this once a day. Oh no! <laughs> uh, once every short rest. Once every short rest. <laughs> <laughs> I say to myself. <laughs> did you know? Did Anna, Anna Lynn, Is that right? Mm -hmm. Did you know those fellas? No, but there are beasts like this that live out here. It is just important sometimes to establish respect in hierarchy. How do you? How did you do? How do you do that with with just sort of a show of force, or did you say something, or in case we need to do it? If you encounter one of these beasts, just pray. Make them. Recognize the Alpha. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. They, main, they maintain their hybrid form, but begin to pick up their pace, kind of arcing in a rightward direction <laughs> off the current path where they first begin to encounter the signs of these beings. But any sort of conflict there was averted Amazing. at the nice. get-go, and the rest of the day before the night begins to slowly darken, the signs of uh, sunset begin to acquire. And you get the sense now that you've traveled through this portion that, depending on the weather and the day, and it's been kind of cold, especially following the previous storm, uh, the, the mists and fog hangs for the majority of the day of your travel. Thinner at times, thicker at others, depending on the rise and fall, the topography, and the root and tree-covered hills. Um, but eventually, Minad kind of puts up a hand and says, well, I think we uh, we need to find a place to stop here and set up camp for the night. We're not too terribly far, I don't think. Looking for he seems he's like rubbing his hand along some of the trees and he's looking for something, and he begins to continue his path around as Annalyn takes her pack off and they begin to 
set up small semblances of camp. You can see that uh, Uvelos uh, were in the process of putting up long, thin cords across some of the nearby trees. Oh. Not magical cords, just sort of trip You can tell, yeah. Okay. What are you feeling the trees for? Uh, Minard's still kind of looking. Well, when we um, come through, especially places that we travel to and from, we make sure to leave markings for ourselves. I'm just, ah, there it is, there it is. And you see, he looks up and there is, looks to be a, a dual sets of claw marks that kind of cross in an X fashion. Oh. Um, but they're, they're balanced, they're, the way that they're marked in looks like it was intentional. They're, they're even on each side. This is, they're, as long as we're keeping eyes on this, this is the best way to track our way. So, you know, if anything terrible happens to the rest of us, you can find your way back to Banach. Nice, nice penmanship. Yeah. The the trees that are that look like maybe there's something growing on them mm -hmm. potentially were there trees like that within the camp, like their actual city or was yeah, it? Yeah, there were a few. Okay. Um, but you know there, there are many different types of trees here. There's just uh, those seem to be more prominent the further you've gone. Um, if you want to make a nature check actually to see from your experience or study if you can pick out any specifics about oh, I've them. I've got a really high nature, so. Mm -hmm. Eleven. Eleven. You're not certain what types of tree these trees these are necessarily, but it doesn't look like this is a parasitic organism that is separate from the tree. The way that it's it's almost like a like a smooth secondary bark that is built over it, um, almost like how resin will harden into an amber, but if they're, but if it was opaque and like a smooth matte black coloration. Does it feel like to the touch, is it sticky or? It's not sticky. It's hard. It's it's almost like a shell, mm. um, but it looks like it, it it seeps into parts of the kind of blanched, whiter, gray, uh, kind of inner bark, and it does have this kind of odd, almost uh, like climbing sense to it. If I scratch it with my nail, does it come off, or is it really hard? It's very hard, but if you scratch it hard enough, you get some residue off under your nail, and it, it just like any other bark, but it does, it does seem to come off in like a, almost like a, like a powdered residue. Interesting. Mm. You see them setting up a small camp around there was a moment I was hoping for a wear tree. Oh. I was hoping they were trying to find the tree that was actually would would transform do back. Like they're trying to tickle a friend or something. Yeah, like just wake up because maybe if you're a wear tree, you just you just kind of stop for a oh, while when the moon. Are, are you still? <laughs> huh? What? How are, her? Do, do they look like they're moving to you? Yes. Wow. They're dancing. Oh. Your pupils are enormous. Are you weirder than normal? Oh, uh, wow, yeah, oh. look at that. <laughs> what did you do? I just I just ate some food. I just ate, uh, ate um, just a little poof of a mushroom. A poof? Is that what it was? That was one of these trees. It was just a little nibble. I thought you said it was, it was fine. It was just a nibble. All mushrooms are totally fine. You don't know eat. anything about mushrooms, do you? I know, I know a little bit. <laughs> you know that there's one that makes you all sorts of weird at this point, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But no, so sometimes uh, being in an altered state like this can sort of give you insight into your own, uh, your own desires, your own goals, your sure. your own fears, your own truths. Sure. Is there anything on your mind that you want to you want to explore or talk about or sing or dance or oh, just be? Oh. Oh. Who do you think um, is the hottest one out of all of us? Really <laughs> it's, I don't know if it's a truth serum, but maybe it's a truth serum, sure. Well, I mean, you all have your own special parts that are great. Who do you think is the hottest out of the werewolves that we're with? Oh, Say oh, Minot. Wow. Yes, Minot, my yes. goodness. Feels like almost yeah. like a cheap answer at that point. Yeah, point. yeah. <laughs> FCG, can you? Can, can I? Get can altered? I recognize? Can I recognize hotness? No. Can you <laughs> oh, get? Can, a little bit? can you get a little trippy? Can you get turned? Yeah. I don't know. Here. I don't eat <laughs> things, but maybe it will make me feel. Can you be poisoned? I don't know. Put we'll it on find your out. Tongue. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> That's what it's what? Like. No. I feel like we're precise to the sorts of people it's that the creator should not. Do you want some? Yeah, I think it is. It comes up constantly. I would love to. I would love to feel feel what you're feeling. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put it on the end of the tongue and I'm gonna roll it in. <laughs> no. I mean, could couldn't you like do a do a, a mind meld? You're like crazy. Oh, yeah. I could just sort of go into your mind and feel it. But let's try this first well, and see if it works. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Since you're technically what you're doing. Why, by introducing a natural phenomenon to a natural space? Yes, it is actually my yeah. fault. You're right, you're right, it is my yep. fault. Yep. Chad, if um, this works, the next thing is you've got to bite letters. <laughs> All the experiments this happen is, tonight. There it is. Mm-hmm. This so is how we celebrate. You over. take the remainder of this this chunk of cap that you had kind of swiped as you passed by, and it is like it's soft, spongy texture to it. Uh, the top of it has uh, an orangish, almost peach coloration to it that goes to a darker redder on the edges, and the underside of it is kind of a like a like a paste gray almost Ew. in the way it, it has this odd mealy texture to it, but it's dry when you touch it. You go ahead and imbibe it, and it just kind of like ping, 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 like plops down inside. Um, it, nothing to uh, report within the first few minutes. Did you feel anything completely connected to the whole network underneath the earth? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, t- I'll touch the ground and see if I can feel anything course through me, pulse through my hands or anything. Feels like the ground. Try taking a little more, that always goes well. <laughs> well, shit. well, it hasn't kicked in yet. Maybe I should try some more. <laughs> no, no. 20 minutes, 30 minutes go by. I guess I'm just not suited for Experiences like that. You have a robust constitution, and it's you are you just are set up for a different version of it. Go for it, if, I could, it I with could, permission. I could go into your mind, but I, you know, I you seem like you're doing fine. You, you if if you want me to, I can, but I don't need to. I'm, I, I want I you to enjoy know. this on your own. You're just having your own time, and that's okay. fine. How many hours has this been going on? Four, by the way. Um, At this point, no. I think four days. That's <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Four uh-huh. fifteen uh-huh. minutes. Unclear. Yeah. <laughs> Make a constitution save. Oh! Oh! Hey! Oh. Okay. Is this a poison? Oh my no, god! You almost. Oh. Uh, I'm re- resistant to poison. Resistant to it, but are you I'm immune? Not immune. Correct. So you make. Do you have advantage on checks against poison, or? Well, is, doesn't that what, isn't that what resistant means? Resistant means you take half poison yeah. damage. Oh, got it, got it. So I'll take the first roll, and what is this, a constitution save? Correct. I was very good, it was 17. 17, so you do, <laughs> you do, feel, you do feel an, an odd kind of tickle through your, through your body, almost like, like when you're nearing a thunderstorm and that sense of electricity is kind of just coasting through the atmosphere and you feel that vibration through your body for a moment, and it just kind of rests there. It's gentle and then slowly just fades, but you felt something. Yeah, that's something. I do still have that weird baggie of drugs that's Okay, like, look, we're going to a trial oh, Give it to me, Thomas, take that too. The, well, what's a bird lady? What's a um, justy? Yeah. Just, justy, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe for later. That's definitely oh, a for later. Seems like now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> let's, have, let's uh. When do we succeed? I'm so excited yeah. that, that yeah. we're in the middle of the jungle <laughs> acting like a bunch of assholes. This is kind of what I always wanted in life, but. You know what, actually, while, for, while you're like this, I wouldn't mind just asking you, because you might have some sort of special insight into the world or, or, or whatever. Oh. I've been, you know, I've been trying to commune or talk to this this god, this thing, this change bringer person, mm. and she's been sending me. Mm. Oh, oh, she's been sending me some really weird mixed sig- signals. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like when I first tried to reach out to her. Um, La- Lawden died. Yes. And I then, remember. but then, but then we got her back. Yes. And so I thought, you know, that's good. That's a positive and a negative. And then, yeah. and then we did. Um, then Eshteros died. Oh yeah. And then we gained a life. We lost. We lost a life. We gained one. We got an air, we lost a, a sky life. ship. Yeah, sky ship. Which it is, doesn't. <laughs> I don't know, there's just been a lot, and then I asked for a sign while we were on the skyship and, and we got attacked instantly. So <laughs> I, I guess what I'm saying is there's been a lot of positives and negatives. Okay. And I, I just don't know how to interpret that. And maybe with your clairvoyant, your, your vision now, you can sort of give insight into what you think it all means, if there is meaning. Well, I think there's a possibility it could all be bullshit, but 
maybe it also could be real. You know, that's what faith is, I hear. Faith is maybe bullshit, maybe real? I don't know. Have Do you, you want me to see if I can connect with whatever this thing is and ask on your behalf? Because I can you pretty do that? Sure, yes. <laughs> I sure can. You can? Yes. All right. Give me just a moment. See if you can reach out to the change bringer. <laughs> change bringer. Change bringer. Please answer me. Make a perception check. With disadvantage, you're poison. <laughs> Concentrate and you focus, and you can hear the various insects and night creatures that have begun to emerge from their subterranean holes or kind of hideaways carved into the nearby branch and trees. And the hum of them seems to almost begin to collide and swirl, and it almost creates this kind of a low rhythmic music. Then it's arrhythmic, then rhythmic again. You feel your heart almost be trying to beat in rhythm, but then it keeps changing. Your body's trying to keep up, and for a moment, you almost swear you hear a voice go, Hi. <gasps> they just said hi. Ask a question, maybe. Am I on the right path? Are you, or, okay. Um, or do, you, do, do they know who I am? Or? Okay. Hi, this is kind of a two-part question, <laughs> but do you know who FCG is, and is he on the right path? Are they on the right path? Excuse Neither me. one. Hi. And you kind of like feel a direction from it. You look down, and kind of on your knee, you see this tiny little black beetle that's <laughs> looking up at you. It's kind of legs out, and it has this like humanoid face, and it just looks up at you, and it goes, "Hi." Oh. <laughs> Are you the change bringer? Hi. Oh wow, I didn't know you would look like this. <laughs> Did you make the decision about Ladna? The wings <laughs> unfurl as it's flying up and kind of lands on your forehead. And as it does, you kind of feel this like warm hug coming around you, like the, the embrace of a deity. You just watch this bug just kind of <laughs> I think that the change bringer is reaching out for a hug for you. I think to that's, hug you? No, or to you. Hug? I think that's fully accepting you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. metaphorical hug. I don't need to hug the bug or anything. Well, maybe you should give it a try. <laughs> give it a big hug. <laughs> try to not squish it. <laughs> Here, I think it wants you back. <laughs> All right, well, well, you should go, and um, thanks for talking to us. <laughs> Does <laughs> it take Sophie here? Love you. Oh. Love you too. There's a little trail of color behind it as it goes. Amazing. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, Luther. Uh, how much time do we have left before we get where we're going? Um, probably looking to arrive sometime tomorrow midday, maybe early afternoon. We're not terribly far. We intentionally built Baranak to be close to this temple. Our friend uh, might have eaten a mushroom off a tree. Why you know, did they do that? I ask that question on a daily basis. <laughs> How long? Be like this forever. <laughs> yeah. What's the what's the time frame? As long as you get her enough water, and we can maybe get some more in her stomach, she'll she'll be right as rain by midday tomorrow. I think. Okay. Dude. Yeah, she's really high. All right. We'll just keep an eye on her. Mm. He gets back to whittling something. 
At this point now, night has definitely overtaken, and the little bit of light that you have exists here in this little campfire in the center of this jungle pocket. You can hear the kind of crackling sound, just a little bit of just warm light that kind of fills and flickers the inside of this jungle hollow. As you're all. Fire's huge! Why does the smoke keep hitting me? Oh, God! Uh, while you're all kind of taking this moment, you have noticed off to the side, Annalyn has been kind of just taking the hammer and kind of spinning it a bit and kind of practicing her own combat form. She's kind of away from the troop. Um, kind of keeping that kind of standoffish energy. After everyone finishes their evening meal and is kind of settling in for the night, you, Chetney, hear the hammer in the kind of ground and dirt next to you. And Enlin leans down from, from, from kind of over your shoulder and just says, walk with me. I'll be back. You need help? You need back? I'm okay. I'm okay. She guides you a little ways out into the mists and fog of the jungle as you walk, not kind of looking at you, she just kind of continues to talk to you. So you have learned a few things. You have taken on some lessons of hemocraft. Some. I feel like the basics, maybe. Show me what you can do. Show me what you got. Show me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Have we taken a short rest? You would have, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then I will again transform into my better self. <laughs> and I will. I don't want to do it to her. Oh, I will. Uh, I'll take out a, my chisel <laughs> and I'll draw it across my peck. <laughs> Yeah, when you see the chisel, a light with flame. Huh? <laughs> like you said, the basics. Oh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of stands there with the leaning on the hammer a bit. So you've come here for a rapid epiphany, to essentially cut the corners and. Acquire more of the path of the lichen. Oh, <laughs> drop right back down to <laughs> Chetney's size. Uh, well, kind of. I mean, no, I was interested in learning as much as I could, but now I'm kind of with a, a group and they're taking on incredible things in the world. Eh? Oh, what I do actually matters for, for what seems like might be the first time. and. So I feel like the more I can learn, the more I might be able to help them, but the more I keep this form, the more I feel, the more I see, and the more I can I can do. I, I found that I can actually manipulate others a little bit, as long as they have blood. And this was with the basics of training. You've just sort of stumbled your way into this. Yeah. I was kind of giving an ultimatum, figure it out or get wrecked. That is a very uh, effective teaching tool, given the circumstances. Yeah. So you, um, why do you want, why do you want to harness this? What is the purpose? Is it fun? Is it the, the rush of power, the, the killing instinct within? Yeah, no, I don't mean to be insincere, but it is a great allure, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I've spent hundreds of years really not being much of a threat to anyone, and it's okay, I don't mind being overlooked, but this is an incredible gift. I don't view it as a curse, I know some might, but I, I view it as an opportunity to, to make change, to, to help, or to affect other areas, you know. I'll make the world a better place. <laughs> you know, for as much as a small 
ragged, prickly persona you maintain for an exterior. There's a soft inside, and you see she kind of like pokes you in the belly. Mm. Does that bother you? I mean, you got a hard finger, yeah. <laughs> oh. You've got a lot more to worry about than this. If you continue on this path, you realize. What do you mean? You will always be hunted. Be- because we're because we're like this. Yes. By who? Fear what they do not understand. And to be completely honest, we are the few that can live with this. Yeah, your group. Um, how many would you say in a year? You know. Don't uh, don't take to it as well. I'd say each year we have about three to four new arrivals, and about three to four that we say goodbye. Oh. It's challenging to maintain a society when the very essence of what brought you together is a continuous day-to-day struggle. Yeah, I'm starting to feel that a little bit more of late. That fucking moon. Hmm. Apparently both of them in some situations, but... I know we... We do our best to maintain an idea of this curse as a blessing. And for us, it has allowed us to do many great things. But it doesn't mean we've conquered it. This is a struggle we will live with for the rest of our lives. And not everyone has the the mental fortitude to fight that long. Yeah, life can be long. It can be short, but boy, it can really be long sometimes. Before I was leading this troop, there was uh, the one who taught me, Omitho. They were an, an old member of the, the Order of the Lycan, a splinter of the Clary Orders, which you said you encountered. Yes. They were one of the individuals that spearheaded the creation of the Gorgine. I looked up to them immensely, and they taught me most everything I know. What what happened to Orma, Orma Thorn? Orma Thor? Orma Thor. One day they woke up and they didn't want to fight anymore and let it take over. Oh. Not because he couldn't. He just grew tired. I tell you this because I want you to know that if you, this is indeed something you want to harness, something you want to take into this temple, you want to beseech the beast to be a part of you, you have to learn to live with it. It's the shadow of a roommate that never goes away. I won't let go, like Omitha did. If anything, the more I think on it as years pass, I think, I think he did what he did to show the rest of us what we can never become. Uh. I appreciate you looking out for me and sharing that. But I don't know how many years I have left anyway. I can't imagine a world in which I didn't take this exciting chance and see it for all that it's worth. That doesn't mean I want to give myself over to it. That shit's fun, don't get me wrong. Whew. But I think I'm okay with that shady-ass roommate you talked about. I think I can cohab. 
This is good to know. But I suppose only Sayadan knows for sure if you are of strong enough will to be let free. Oh boy. This trial, um, if you don't pass, do you get like a second chance? Uh, best of three? Every trial that's granted by Sayadun is tailored to the individual. Oh. So I do not know what lies before you, but I hope for the sake of you and your compatriots that now nah, you'll figure it out. Oh, shit, that was slick. I look, I know this is a serious thing, but man, I'm pumped. Good, good. So you've picked up some blood runes. Show me your glyph work. Oh shit. <laughs> my, my, gly my glyph work? Yes. You know how to strike a singular rune, but that is simplistic. Carve a symbol, like this, and you watch as she takes her finger, and she has this, her, her thumb, which has kind of a, a, a normal kind of stubbed nail that she's kind of worn down through use, and tiger claw seems to emerge from it suddenly and strikes like a curved C shape that kind of <laughs> into your chest where ah. you drew that cut ah. earlier, and it hurts. Oh, yeah. But as it does, the flame on your weapon kind of burns a little bit brighter. What was that? Glyph work. You instinctually have learned or picked up from your previous training the most basic of lines of power through Hemocraft. The blood itself is a very strong catalyst, but you are using it as a raw material. You are accepting it just as the most basis of mineral as fuel for the magic. You need to practice and refine, and then you'll be really surprised at what good you can do in this world, if that is indeed what you seek to do. That sea was amazing. How many runes are there? And you watch her, she like takes her hand, and the fingers now all have that kind of tiger claw, and she curls it Whoa. together. You feel this like burning, searing sensation in your exposed chest, and you look down, and Indeed, the glyph of castigation, the, the, the brand that you have recently learned, which has always been like this kind of very simple, kind of semi-circular, just kind of like a series of dragged claw marks in places. It looked more like a like a, a bestial brand than a glyph. When you see it burn into your chest, you look down and the claw marks seem to form a, a fractal pattern. And as it kind of spreads out and then spreads out further and then spreads out further, it clicks in and glows this bright, bright red coloration. And you suddenly, you feel this kind of like cold anchor that's drawn in her direction. Ah, ah, that's beautiful, beautiful attention to detail. How? Oh. It's like calligraphy. It just takes practice. Now, and she, dispels it, and you watch as the glyph kind of releases on your body, and she walks over to one of the blanched trees and pulls out a pocket knife, hands it to you. Let me show you. And for the next few hours into the evening, she just begins to show you the basics of advanced glyph work, uh, explaining to you that through practice and time, this will allow you to further develop and expand upon the basics of human craft that you've kind of instinctually stumbled through. So, this yeah. thus begins a brief compounding lesson for the future. I trade her, I, I hold out of the pocket knife unless she wants it back and I'll give her a detailing chisel. This is a very curious knife. Just in case I don't, uh, I don't make it tomorrow, which I will. But listen, just something to remember me by if you really want to get serious about your detail. It's all about pressure and angle. Oh. Hmm. Appreciate it. Of course. Tucks it into her armor. Fucking pocket knife, basic ass edge. <laughs> it's really nice, though. <laughs> but. Probably well into the early morning, you kind of go through these practices, swap a few stories, you learn a little bit about her history, about uh, Divishula was, what she called a name from a previous life. 
before acquiring the curse and was, you know, before training amongst the Gorgine, she expresses that she was a student, actually, at the Dial Hall mm-hmm. of Drusar when she was younger and knew the Dial family growing up as a student. When the curse found her, she vanished from the city for obvious reasons, took the name Enelin. Yes. And did she talk about um, what her experience was with that first uh, lichen? There was some sort of a, um, some sort of a, a mislabeled delivery towards the northeastern port of the Odiran Wilds. I was sent that way to visit an uncle, and uh, they were supposed to be receiving a, a package, a gift. Um, and this lichen was temporarily unleashed. I don't really know why or how, though I get the sense that it was um, to deal with the Ivory Syndicate from what Ajit told me. If you ever encounter a pale-ass elf with brown hair past the ears, bright amber eyes, scar under his mouth to the left-hand side, ask if his name is Doral. Doral. And if it is, kill them for me. Doral the dead. She grabs her hammer and sits up. Well, we have a travel to do. We should get some rest. Cool. What, what, what were the markings? Doral's markings? Scar, oh, scar, scar on the mouth, left yeah. mouth around there. Awesome. So, night's rest comes to a close. You all get a long rest. Long rest. <laughs> the morning do they, comes. Do they just sleep out in the in the open air, like around the fire? Uh, some of them sleep out in the open air. Minad uh, sleeps up in the tree boughs, kind of like leaning against one of the branches, kind of keeping one eye open. Uh, and Annalyn, you don't know where she sleeps. She never comes back to the camp. Oh. Interesting. But when you all come back to your waking selves, somewhat rested, though, you know, cold in the you know foggy morning here in the middle of the jungle, uh, Annalyn has returned and is currently in the process of throwing ash and rock over the fire to go ahead and prevent it from catching or continuing on to Ember. At this point, Minad kind of glances around to the rest of you after a brief bit of breakfast is had. All right, everyone, looks like we're ready to head out. We've got a handful of hours until, uh, until we're out there. Everyone feeling okay? <laughs> were you able to sleep at Mushroom all? Mushroom check, how are you doing? I, I had, I slept, I think. Just, um, I just see like, <sighs> Wow. It's moving pretty fast, but I'm doing great. How do you feel for your big trial? Oh, I'm, I feel good. You feel ready? Yep. Do you, if you succeed, when you succeed, because, mm-hmm. you know, victory, victory isn't, yeah, it's not a, it's, it's, an, it's an attitude. It's a, it's a way of being. It's a, mm-hmm. you got to be it. Mindset. It's a mindset. Yeah, but when you're victorious, do you have to pick like a wolf name or something? Oh. Oh, I don't know. I hadn't thought about that. I, I don't even know. Maybe I could pick another form. <gasps> no, that can't be right. I don't know. Anything's possible. No, it can't be right. Maybe it is. What, what, what form would you pick if you could choose? We never asked you that last night. Cockatoo. <laughs> oh, sure. you'd be a really, cool. really, really smart good, as yeah. fuck. Well, with talk. the color of the plume being. Yep. <laughs> Fits, oddly. Like a peach plume. And then you'd fly. Who wouldn't want to fly? Cockapedia. I, I love flying. Yep. It changes on the daily. I'm a little fickle. <laughs> I don't know. I think you were a wolf. Well. Mm. Thank you, Olorm. I appreciate that. I do my best. You can bite less. And if I was a cockatoo, they would just be like nibbles. Right. Mm. Unless I don't like you, and then them some bitches hurt real bad. Yeah, birds I can, drop birds can be dicks. Real hard. Yeah. Mm. Beaks are scary. Is that on the back, by the way? Annalyn is, is back in the group. Is back in the okay. group, yeah. That one's kind of finished up their morning oh ritual. God. Yeah. 
I just have a question we've kind of been wondering. Um, do you do you choose what um, where beast you turn into, or is it? Oh, I do mean, you, yeah. At the moment of infection, yeah. You, you, the, the great spirit of the like. The lichen beast comes to you and asks you to step through many doors, and each door is a different beast, and you select which door to go through. I almost went with doors were there. There was about thirty-seven of them. They're expanding every year, though. They're trying to. No, it's it's the each strain carries the beast. In it. I'm sorry. Oh, I had to, oh, oh. I saw the gullibility open, and I couldn't I couldn't stop myself. It's okay. It's I just, a fragile state, right? I understand. Now. Look, it, it was all in good fun. I feel bad now. It's don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. But yeah, it's um, no. It, Lycanthropy, every strain comes in its own variation. I don't quite know what the origins are for each one, whether they be magically created or what sort of lycanthrop bloodline curse may I come from, but no, if you get bit by a werewolf, you can become a werewolf. If you get bit by a were-boar, you become a were-boar. Oh. It's just I, kind I, of have you ever seen a were-horse? Thank you. You watch him nod like, Burrows his brow, trying to comprehend what the hell that would look like. And goes, I, I don't. <laughs> Herbivores in general. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, as far as I know, most everything is is, is predominantly predatory, and the, the basis of the curse uh, be real. Wouldn't, wouldn't be all that helpful and or dangerous if you became a beast that just ravaged all the nearby plants. So that depends on the plants. I agree. Savage kick, though. Where, dear? Mm, not so bad. As far as I know, at least. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm no expert. But, you know, could always be something different. Mm -hmm. It's a big world. Moose or. Where moose would be for right? The scariest. Moose, yes. uh -huh. I've never seen oh my god, can you imagine how big a were moose yeah, would be? Real big. Where giraffe? Would the, would the were moose shrink the when they became a person? Right. Oh, man. Well, okay. How about you go ahead and chew on this twig for a bit while we're walking, and just uh, keep yourself focused. I think we're gathering up, and we'll start making our way eastward. Why have we never thought about getting our twig? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Did you give her a twig because it helps with the mushrooms, or is it because she looks like a deer? Or maybe just because of like the jaw, it's like she's clenching her jaw. Sure. Oh. No, just, just to help. I he was profiling for a moment. <laughs> Sweet, <laughs> Sweet minister. Legitimately, the very least I could do. Um, <laughs> What's the most? <laughs> oh, okay. oh my oh, god! Right, let's I'm just go. kidding. We're walking. We're walking. So we're walking. walking. He just dark, dark, darkens his shade a little more and just keeps walking. Um, <laughs> um, but. Draw it. <laughs> you can <laughs> continue on for a few more hours. You do sense the toxins begin to subside within your system, and your vision comes back to a clearer, more controlled space. Um, I would like somebody to roll a to twenty. Hey, the singing stopped. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you like to roll a d twenty? All Imagine. right, Marisha Ray. Sure. <laughs> Six. Mm -hmm. Six, okay. Well, the good news is they're good trackers. Um, so along this path, you it isn't as much of a beeline as you would hope, and Annalyn and Uvello and a few of the other members have to like stop a few times and take a few large curves from the general path as Annalyn kind of glancing about, telling you all to be quiet and stealthily follow. We're starting to get near some of the more dangerous beasts and they're domains here in the jungle. The, the powers of this temple tend to gather attention, subconsciously as it may be, of some of the larger civilians of this expense. What more, more dangerous compared to the twilight tigers that were <laughs> oh, oh, massive? No, they're, they're, they're size nothing. Size isn't everything. Hmm? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, all right. You had to roll a five or lower um, oh. to get into a, a bad scenario here. Damn it! They're good. They're good. They're good trackers. Um, but you do eventually follow them into the kind of mid-afternoon or so, about three or four, 
The mists have mostly burned off, but you can feel the temperature beginning to slightly cool as the uh, what was a very sunny sky above the canopy begins to fall back into cloud cover, and the night begins to announce itself slowly arriving. You watch as Manad turns back to the troop. Keep your weapons and wits about you. We're not too far from it, so uh, I guess we'll be uh, be showing you one of our little our little secret hideaways. Wait, weapons and wits? What do you mean? Does it like spring out at you, or? No, it's it's a temple. But like I said, a lot of things sometimes take up residence in there, and we're not aware of who's camping up in there. Right. right. Now, we ever tell you much about this temple? I mean, no, nope. not really. No. I'm just gonna cast. Mage armor on myself just to okay. have it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna just go over to Chetney and just be like, "You got this today. This is all you today, right?" Yeah. All right. I'll just give him a pat on the back and cast Death Ward on him. Yeah. All right. Mm. All right. Uh, no, you didn't tell us about the temple. I wrote down Zavralo Temple of, and that's it. The Savage Heart. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's the temple of uh, Sayaran, which is the keeper of the Savage Heart. Um, I'll be honest with you. When I went through my trial, I saw something different than what everyone else here is. It's not a singular beast, but it seems to be kind of a representation of the the feral protective spirits of the Gloom Jungle, or at least this area of it. So uh, I can't really guarantee what you're going to run into, but it is a powerful spirit. It's said that it kind of kind of looks over the order of nature, the cycle of it. It is both a protector of and a guide to both hunter and prey. It, it knows that in order to live, that balance has to be struck. I think that's part of, part of why I felt drawn to this part of my Marquette to begin with when we were trying to find a home and we couldn't really find much rest up to the northwest. So, um, it was, and kind of looks up ahead to see if uh, anyone else is, you know, watching anything beyond your group here in the jungle, kind of briefly glances about. There was a short time during the Apex War that uh, it became a, a secret military outpost for the Stratos throne. What? Wait, this, this temple? Yes. Yeah. All right. Wow. Okay. It was uh, briefly occupied and used as kind of a base of operations for some sort of group of operatives, hoping to strike out at Eos and some of the more sensitive elements of a Shenador. But uh, is there, is there shit still around, or is that like there's like bits of? Uh, you can weird. see bits and chunks because uh, it seems that Sayadin definitely took it back herself. Fuck yeah! <laughs> the beasts of the temple sent them packing and fleeing. Uh, kind of left a bunch of their stuff behind. We've. You know, co-opted what we could find that was useful and kind of, you know, not sure how much we're supposed to clean up since some of it could be just kind of a reminder and a war trophy for the spirits. So we just let it lie where we find it for the most part and ask for forgiveness or for permission if we find anything of usefulness. That's pretty fucking cool. Wait, what? <laughs> Did you, were you, a, 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 how long ago was that? What, that's not me asking, I would know, but. Yeah, yeah, a couple decades ago. Okay, okay, okay. But unfortunately, when they fled, they did did a bit of damage to the temple. Uh, it was kind of elements of it partially crumbled and forgotten, but you know, we managed to uncover it and make do with what we could muster. And the central chamber is still pretty much there, which is good. So, just to give you expectations, it's not some grandiose structure that's beautiful and standing untouched and you know basking in the middle of the daylight. It is. Um, it's a partial ruin, but it's got its beauty intact for the most part. So th this Sayadin resides there? Oh, here and everywhere a little bit. And it's the remains of an outpost, and also sometimes creatures from the area wander in? Is well, the that... temple was briefly used as, a, as an outpost before it was then evacuated once more. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said even earlier than that that sometimes some of the wildlife from the area. And then the nature of the spirit mm. of the the temple just draws some of the more natural and sometimes unnatural creatures towards it by the, you know, it's kind of a power hub, if you will, of different spiritual energies. How long have you been living in, in Baranok? 
Oh, we've only been here for. Uh, oh God. I don't know. Oh, number of years, five, six years or so Got since it. we built it. Got it. All right. Yeah, we've been we've been moving around for quite some time and kind of heading through the continent as we go. But you know, it's the first time that we, you know, struck an agreement with the uh, Court of the Lambent Path, or at least our contact there, and felt safe enough to put down some roots. It's nice. It's a nice feeling, I'm sure. Honestly, yeah. Been a while since really kind of a place we can call home for a bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, anyway, we we often, when we're feeling like we're having a rough time with our struggles or just need some clarity of mind, we'll go ahead and make a small pilgrimage out here to the temple, whether it be independently or as a troop, and that's where we'll go through and look for inspiration, bits of prayer, maybe ask for a new challenge from the spirit, or just leave offerings, take some time to meditate, clear our minds. It's, you know, it's part of the reason we build our village close enough to do that. It feels like one of the few ancient pure spots that hasn't been co-opted or built over by some of the nearby civilization, you know? Do you always get a response from the spirit of the savage garden? Savage heart? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Good song. Sometimes it can be my wish, it can be my fantasy. I mean, I've certainly felt it and, and conversed with it when I went through my initial trial, and sometimes it's just a feeling, a presence, a, 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 a protection, or. or Feeling like something's watching for, out for you, as long as you show the respect that it's due. Um, but like I said, it, form can be different for whoever is reaching out to it. For those who aren't coming with the purest of intent, well, <laughs> you'll see what happens to them. Okay. Uh, Thanks. You, you'll see. You'll see. Are you feeling pure? Today, Jenny's like the least pure person. I agree. No. What? I'm 100 percent pure stunner. <laughs> pure feels vague. And is, does Chetney have to go in on his own? No, I mean we're we're all going to be going into the temple here. We want to show you around, make sure you're not following any pit traps or okay. you know if stuff starts going bad, we can try and evacuate you out of there. But you know. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the trial's going to necessarily represent. That's that's for you to find out, and for all of us to be at the ready, I suppose. Oh, we're there. We'll, we'll be there to help you if you need it. Hope it's just endless supplies of wood. Yeah, like a carving challenge. Oh boy, that might that, be I, it. That feels like that's probably what it's yeah, going to be. Yeah, it's probably going to be woodworking yeah. base. That'll warm up the riots. Okay. Oh, do we get to be the judges? <gasps> And you have like a time limit? It's a good show. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like wipes a little bit of a little bit of moisture and snot from the end of his nose mark. and goes, I'm not gonna lie, that'd be a lot of fun. We'll kind of mix it up from the usual. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'm with you on that one. Uh, anyway, let's keep eyes ahead. We're not too far. And within a, another couple hours of travel through the uh, the pale, blanched, and blackened trees begin to transition in places. They don't fully fade away, but their density and kind of monochrome uh, cluster. So kick my leg out from under me, Lord Bailey. <laughs> you see more cerulean leaves, pops of different types of trees that begin to come through the further eastward you travel. Um, these have a, uh, a, a deep maroon type trunk to them, thinner, not as thick as the masses of the jungle trees that you've seen, but these have like a like a thick brown maroon coloration. As they rise up, there are these kind of almost cotton-like plumes of blue that grow out of the branches. These like softer bits, and they just kind of dot the landscape as you go. I've never this seen is... trees like this. 
Yeah, you don't really see trees like this anywhere outside of the gloom jungles. There's something about the, I don't know, something in the air, something in the soil. It's how I imagine Feywild would look. Mm. Yeah. Is a little it? bit. Yeah, I think I've seen things like this. A little bit, different colors. See, Uther kind of comes from behind and goes, some folks ought to come out here and take some of these trees and try and sell them off land, but they don't take really to any soil or roots outside of it, outside of magical enchantment means. It's really expensive to get any of these to, to keep to a garden somewhere. There are those that do, and I'm sure there's a fine business trade for that somewhere here, but marvel and take it in. You won't see much of this elsewhere. Does it look like face stuff that yeah. you've seen before? You can make a nature check if you like. With disadvantage? No, you're no longer no, poisoned. Poison. Poison. How do you know she's probably dropping mushrooms? Well, no, I don't know what she's doing. My nature's baloney. Why did I just roll twice? You're a fucking Sorry, nature, like nature person. No, uh, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do you get advantage because it's about the Fey Realm and you're from the Fey Realm? No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but good looking out. Um, <laughs> I mean, kind of reminds you of the Pharaoh a little bit, like just like the weirdness. But you know, you've never seen these types of trees necessarily. But it does kind of like, I don't know, the the unfamiliar kind of alien landscape feel of it does does kind of give you a little little scratch of home. It feels a little reminiscent, just a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's it's different. I, I haven't quite seen them sort of this um, color before. It's beautiful. We're here. <laughs> As you all begin to step behind Annalyn, who'd been keeping uh, a good like 20, 30 paces ahead, who kind of leans back to announce that and carefully kind of ushers you up over this hill. Beyond that, you can see this kind of choked clearing where it, most of the trees keep a fairly uh, loosely consistent pattern of density throughout the jungle with small patches that are open where uh, either small, ancient stone constructs that have fallen just into piles of rock over time, uh, or gardens of uh, dangerous-looking plants that you are told to avoid as you go by have kind of taken root. But here, you see there are cliffs, like small, jutting cliffs that begin to rise out of this part of the jungle. And you know, the topography rises and falls at times, but here you can see you're not uh, terribly far from the base of a mountain range, but this is the first kind of like large cliffside you see rising up. Uh, and in this rocky hillside, you can see it is overgrown with numerous dark roots that spill over the top, and there are trees that rise up above it. And as the roots kind of pour down and tangle, uh, you can see these hanging gray vines that just kind of wrap around it. And as they kind of tether down, they wind in between the roots, and it kind of gives this odd, almost like a natural, uh, like a cathedral look to it, built in the side of this uh, this rocky surface that itself has all manner of green and gray and brown moss that grows wherever elements of it are exposed to the rainy and damp elements. One by one, we climb it to <laughs> <laughs> You do yeah, see... That's right, we planned that. <laughs> you do see... Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. Um, <laughs> you see, at certain portions, there are bursts of jet black and very, very bright purple fungus, um, different than the ones that you had consumed that seem to almost, the, the purple ones pull out these long shelves, they almost reach like almost a full two feet out at the height from the surface Aww. they extend from, where the jet ones are almost like these small pods, these small puff balls that are just pitch black. It looks almost like a void until you see some of the light kind of glitter pass and you can see the the, the surface texture of it. I feel like you Okay. <laughs> you also can see that there is a half-collapsed rubble of ruined stone that crowns visibly carved uh, a mason structure. It is built into the side of the rock. It has been swallowed by most of these vines, and you can see there is a portion of the, the cliff that is cracked and stones have fallen, and where it would look like a bit of natural erosion, you can see signs of intentional carving and shaping, where softer stones are smoothed, where you can see there are shapes that look like they are uh, like a claw that reaches out and holds onto a stone bowl that is cracked and broken. You can see there's a large 
one of those large burgundy trees has <laughs> fallen from the top and is like half angled over, and it's uh, what would be its canopy of extremely bright blue is empty. The tree itself no longer rooted and died. It is now just this reaching, kind of extending, almost a almost a, a, a bloodstream looking extension of thin branches that reach out to nothing before they just fall onto the ground before it. But you can see there is a cavern beyond where it is tumbled and where some of these shapes of ancient carvings are still visible amongst the exterior. This looks to be an entryway. As the group begins to emerge from the tree line and stepping out into this clearing towards it, um, Annalyn turns around and addresses the rest of you. I ask all of you to be respectful. If there's anything you wish to take, make sure you ask permission. Insight check. <laughs> sure. Can, can I give you advantage? What do you know? <laughs> I'm just trying to read her. Okay. See what she's thinking. I rolled a six. Total six? Well. Oh no, 12. Take advantage, because I think we're all doing the same thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> assisting. 12. You can, you can. You can roll the advantage of everyone if you're being assisted by the rest of the group. Oh. All heads just like <laughs> 20. <laughs> of course I'm going to try. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. She's I'm going to I'm gonna try to be very good. I'm really trying in my heart. That's what I'm feeling. I can't even tell if you're lying to me as Ashley Johnson yeah. right now. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm curious before we head in, how how big is Annalyn's hammer? Just because I'm. Uh, it's hammer, hammer envy. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. no, it's 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 <laughs> it's maybe about two inches shorter than yours. Okay, but it's yeah, thicker. Right. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Twelve. Um, you're a child. You're a child. <laughs> Uh, no, I'd say the, the the one major difference is the um, whereas yours is is like an even hammer for yeah. both uh, impacting oh, the sides. Oh, it's a war hammer. Yeah, this one has a, a wider front and like almost like not, not quite a pick at the end, but it has a, a thinner point of impact so that it can sure. be more incisive yeah. pressure against whatever it wants to hit. All right, and I probably have been watching a little. I've been watching a little bit the the practice. Run. A little bit, yeah. I'm pretty sure. It, I assume it's nice and clean and well formed. It is. I know. I'm feeding the Yeah. Don't think I don't know that. Take it, motherfuckers. Children. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just uh, yeah. I'm just gonna yeah. take a second and just have the. Uh... All right. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Feeling uh, insecure, Ashton. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to, mm -hmm. to see how this whole thing works out. Mm. Are you a little cold? <laughs> Just Come on. That. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the pool. <laughs> Should I, mine is bigger. Okay. No. Hmm. Uh, as you all approach this one exposed entryway, and it looks like amongst the tree that's fallen and the roots that kind of curl around it, there's uh, a space about the size of Ashton. Um, so you know, no one has to uncomfortably reach through, but it, you can see what may have been a larger entrance is now mostly covered. Um, each one of the Gorgine kind of like step in, and you watch as uh, Manad kind of keeps the caboose region of it, kind of waiting for all of you to enter beforehand. After you. Yeah, Chetney first. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Party. <laughs> Body and nose. So, as you all begin to push into the interior of the structure, whatever it may be, uh, you immediately are hit by the smell of stale water and damp earth and old musk, like bestial scents, things that may have been either cast or rubbed against rock or just left to mark something passing through and claiming it as territory, and to either vanish or still live somewhere in the shadow within. Cat piss smell? A little bit, amongst other sort of natural scents. Cat piss plus a couple hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> you can see as you step through this long, winding tunnel, the first thing you notice is there are wooden supports 
like little beams in the sides that you'd see in the inside of a of a mine shaft to a certain extent. Um, one of them looks like it's kind of slightly splintered in places, but it's built into it, not quite held in, holding the same kind of ancient temple aesthetic that you would expect. Um, you can see hanging from one of its kind of iron bars around it, it looks to be a lantern, but the glass element has been shattered. Did that scaffolding start after a delay? Like when we entered, there were very, very old carvings, and it was a, a clear entrance. Correct. And as you stepped inside, maybe about 15 or so feet, you saw this beginning of wooden scaffolding. Um, you push through no more than maybe 50 or 60 or so feet, moving past edges of this long kind of carving tunnel. Uh, you begin to look around and see that this area might have been larger in places, but elements of it have collapsed inward. You can see there are piles of rock and stone. Um, there's a brief moment where you instinctually you worry that maybe this is unstable. Um, but most of the cliff looked solid, and the areas here that are collapsed, it doesn't look like there are large signs of heavy structural damage or long cracks that wind through. Just elements of the walls that have seemingly fallen. Mm. You also, through the interior, notice bones. Oh. You can see ancient chunks of bone, flakes and shards, things that have just either been crushed through time or through many, many years have just been stepped on until it became just a shale that once existed within a creature, with chunks of larger bone here and there. An immediate glance, not entirely certain as to what these may have belonged to, until you see the first humanoid skull. First Humanoid Humanoid skull. Oh. But you see other skulls too here. You see things like wolves or coyotes or uh, another that looks almost like a massive feline skull. Something that may have fit like one of those Twilight Tigers you saw earlier, but it is long, uh, overgrown with like a moss. And you can see part of its jaw is missing and it's just kind of like partially embedded into the stones that have gathered around it. It's been here for quite some time. In fact, a lot of these bones and some of the uh, carvings on the inside look like they've been here for quite some time. You can see there are shapes. Nothing here is refined. There was no uh, you know, societal architect that came in here and renovated and built a great temple. Uh, what you see are shapes that look like beasts. Uh, it looks like a, a wolf head that emerges from the rock, and it looks like it's been just over time ground into its shape, but it's, it's around at the edges. It's more of a, the essence of a beast. Uh, ancient enough to where the stonework here is Interpretive and rough. You use the word ancient for the bones. Are there anything any more recent mixed in? Mm -hmm. Years, decades? You can make a uh, make a perception check for me. Do the carvings look similar? Like they're from the same time period as that statue that was in the middle of town? Jesus. The statue in the middle of town, you didn't take too much time to look at, but it looks like you do. I would say they're still building that statue. Got it. That one seemed actually pretty recent, but the process seems to be similar. It's more like just rough uh, carving away at stone and chiseling at it with tools. Natural point. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, a lot of these bones look very old, and a lot of them look like they've been either uncovered recently by someone sweeping through. Um, when I say recently, I mean like in the past, you know, number of years. Um, but some some of them look very new. Um, some of them look like creatures that may have died not more than. A few months back, and the the bones themselves look clean and smoothed over. Like the insects and other creatures that exist off the decay of beings have cleaned it thoroughly, and it's now left here as another display of the cycle of life. You also see human skulls that look like they probably from the natural twenty, been here for a few decades. Um, you see chunks of leather armor. You see rusted weaponry. Any wounds in the skulls? Um, yes. In, indeed. Uh, in fact, in one of the skulls, you see what looks to be a series of puncture marks that look like large teeth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, teeth, mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. I mentioned you, that to the group. Uh, you also see along the, the, the walls and bits of the, the wood with your natural 20 as you're kind of now inspecting the space around, there are gashes, strikes across the wood, some that could be bladed, some that could be claws. You do see one blade that is half still embedded in one of these kind of uh, Archway uh, supports, um, but rust has taken it extensively. Boy, it feels like a lot has happened in here. 
a lot. But a short jaunt in, this tunnel opens into a larger antechamber. Here in this room, you can see there's a break in the ceiling about 40 feet above you, where you can just see a bit of the sky above. There is actually about a, a two or three foot hole that you can see out into the uh, elements. Actually, from this view, you can't see any trees, but you do see almost like a single shaft of light that breaks down and kind of falls into the center of the room. Um, where the light hits, you can see there is water trickling through, whether it be just runoff from the recent storm or some element of a nearby brook above the cliff drains out here, but there is just a single, ever-present trickle of water that just kind of partially mists as it falls, and it just topples down into the middle of the chamber, where you see standing a female humanoid statue that kind of resides in the middle of this central chamber. Um, you see this woman kind of clutching something to her chest, um, in the darkened, kind of shattered interior. There looks to be arisen platforms underneath her to the center of this chamber, and there are numerous other statues carving, some of what you've seen, that are standing on their own, but some of them have fallen over and crumbled with bits of the fallen rock. This ruin, the more you look around, again, going to take in your eyes adjusting to the light, this room has seen quite a bit of collapse. Whole sections of it seem to have slid inward and you can see there are piles of, of loose stone and uh, collapsed cavern that have kind of just mounted up at certain edges. Uh, beneath them, you can see bones emerging. You can see broken furniture, bits of wood. You can see uh, what looks to be uh, metal tools that are kind of like rusted and lost amongst the rest of broken stone and pebble. Um, you can see what looks to be a, a, a panther-like stone sculpture that is shattered into four pieces and has kind of been overgrown with bits of, of vine and moss. Um, it is... Uh, quite an interesting combination of old and new decay and nature reclaiming it all. Is there any, um, as we're looking around, are there any like markings, runes, glyphs, pictographs, anything that looks like it was etched into this stone? Uh, go ahead and make a perception or investigation check. Twenty-four. Nice. Twenty-four. You do not see any runes. Um, there is nothing. There is nothing carved in here that appears to resemble language or draconic magical rune uh, artistry. It looks like everything here is more simple, other than the statues themselves, which have a little more detail, even to the things you saw before, um, especially the statue of the woman in the center. Um, but you do see amongst the walls sconces number of, of metal iron sconces that are bolted into the stonework around the chamber. Um, and you watch as the Gorgine kind of separate and begin to take out of their pouches dried wood and begin to kind of fill the sconces and prepare them to be lit. And as they do, they kind of go around the room and begin to light the kind of wall-mounted braziers to go ahead and begin to bring more of a flickering firelight into the chamber. As we start to get more light in here, uh, is there any obvious remnants of the Stratos throne strewn about? I'd say still going off your, your even just your passive perception. Yes, in fact, most of the broken furniture and wood and the semblances of, you know, more recent human remains that exist in here amongst the various other beast and animal remains um, look like there are signs that somebody once put in tables and chairs and bunks and um, you're not sure how much further this chamber once went and what other rooms may have been accessible from here, but it looks like a lot of what was brought in here by the Shadow's Throne has been destroyed, centered, or buried. Uh, but there are broken remnants of it, reminders of it. and Like barracks, mess hall, that kind of thing. Broken yeah, you don't see anything pieces. specific like that, yeah. uh, at least not within this central antechamber. Uh, and you see signs of other tunnels that may have gone further, but those have since like collapsed inward and are cut off. Um, but you do see broken piles of materials. You see like old leather satchel bits that are like overgrown with mold and uh, moss at this point. Kind of the green vines that have come down to that open hole now have like, extended across the entire ceiling and just dangled down. And so, you know, about 
10, 12 feet above where you're standing to the 40-foot apex there, there is just hundreds and hundreds of vines that just hang and dangle at different heights above that one shaft of light that comes down into the center of the chamber. You can see the roots kind of breaking through parts of the above ground and the uh, the stonework of the ceiling from whatever elements of trees still exist above the top of this cliff. Do you have to go talk to the statue or anything? Or? Uh... I don't think so. I'm just kind of waiting to take my cues from the rest of the group. Maybe you have to romance the statue. Maybe he has to fall in love with you. Romance the stone, you say? Yes, I do. Mm. Take hey. Ashton's hammer. What? Oh, no, no, you're fine. No. I the fine. statue? You're in an aggressive know. place right now. I like it. Mm-hmm. Keep it. I was just, I was enjoying the confidence. I was trying to just put a little pick up. I will walk pick towards up. the statue though. And um, is there any sort of expression or body language? I mean, she's clutching her hands to her chest. Yeah. But. So as you watch it, you see this is a, um, this is a, a, a woman. Uh, the statue itself standing probably about six foot tall. Um, you see, she has this kind of like majestic air about her. A plump frame. Uh, long curling hair that kind of goes past the shoulders and almost touches the ground around her. It seems to like unfurl into the ground. Um, she's clutching what looks like a like a scabbard to her chest with both hands, and she's kind of just looking forward with this kind of maternal, like partial smile. It's almost welcoming. It it, it definitely stands out against a lot of the rest of this temple. Um, make a religion check for me. And like a empty scabbard, or is there a cross hilt in the? Sword in there. You do not see that there's no signs of a sword or anything. It's just like she's holding, clutching a scabbard to her chest. Religion check. Why do I have? Why would I have advantage on that? Does anybody here have a decent nature, by the way? Anybody recall lore about deities, rites, nope. and prayers? No. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. No. How is that possible? Whoa! A 19 and a 20. So natural 20 for 22. Ooh. All righty. Damn. Um, this is indeed a statue of Seratami. Which oh, is the Marquesian name of the Wild Mother. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> she represents the the goddess and entity that oversees, protects, and is the through line and spiritual cord to all things natural that exist in the wild, whether it be seas or forests and jungles and everything that that lives through the cycle of water to light to prey to hunter to the natural order and cycle that maintains everything beyond civilization. That is Seratani, that is the Wild Mother. And uh, you recall when you were first discussing this temple with uh, the Gorgine that they mentioned that the spirit, the uh, 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 the this actual savage spirit of this temple, Sion, is, is a spirit entity that is either an extension of a creation of, of the Wild Mother, of Seratani. Uh, as, as you're kind of approaching and looking over the statue, uh, Annalyn begins to walk to you as the final bits of these uh, kind of torch brazers are lit. It goes, Welcome to the Chamber of Trials. This is where the Hunter's Bane is granted to those within the Gorgine who choose to walk the path of Hemocraft and control this beast and harness it for the hunt. Here is where offerings are made to the spirit, Sayadan. Here, the being in the savage heart and its creator. And as she gestures to the, to the statue, you look now below the statue on the floor, there are a number of metal and stone like platters or just uh, square, sh- almost like, a, like stone platforms and, and little chunks of, of wide shale that can be used to carry things. And there's uh, rotted fruit and bone where the meat has been plucked away, and coins, and all manner of just offerings that have been brought that are kind of clustered and, and piled around this central statue. And you watch as uh, Annalyn ducks to, uh, kneels down, opens her pack, reaches in, and pulls out uh, a bit of dried meat, a piece of platinum, and what looks to be a, a uniquely bright green fruit that kind of stands out and kind of sets them onto one of these little platters. She sits up and turns to you as the rest of the Gorgine come and kind of leave their own little offerings at the base of the statue. Mm-hmm. Were we supposed to bring something? Yeah. I think it's for me. Hi. Um. This is where the balance 
of the gloom is watched over and maintained. You who seek to speak and commune with the spirit, leave an offering. Yeah. So I'll go over and I'll, I'll also take out two platinum, not to be shown up. And I'll also pull out what looks like a, a small fang, but it's carved out of wood, intricately detailed. It's a wolf's tooth. The gum line represented perfectly. Slight cavity marks, because why would you brush your teeth? <laughs> Place them. Place them <laughs> at the base of the statue. Oh. <laughs> We may camp here for tonight. Oh. oh. <laughs> While we settle for the evening's turn. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I believe it is your prerogative. You can to do meditate. What you want to, do. to sit here in the antechamber and concentrate. Speak your mind. What you seek, what you wish to be rid of, and if you're lucky. The spirits listening. With that, Annalyn turns around and the Gorgonia begin to like take out their bedrolls and kind of choosing corners of the room. And they're like little pockets of the room where you know the, the kind of somewhat collapsed stone can be cleared away, and there's a few spots that look a little warmer towards the edge of the tunnel. And the uh, rest of you can do the same if you'd like. How big is this chamber? It's probably so maybe like 100, 100 to 150 feet across at places. Like it, it, it's it's not like a perfectly open chamber since parts of it have fallen in. It kind of has an odd shape to it. But I'd say at times places it's somewhere between, you know, close to 100 feet across, if not a little more, a little less. Okay. Are we just supposed to go to sleep now? Or I mean, are you staying up all night to pray? Yeah, I think so. I'm in for the long haul. We should stay up with you then. No, I mean, listen, uh, you need your rest, keep your strength. I mean, need your help. So let's consider it like I'll, I'll take the first of a few watches. And if something goes wacky, I'll sound the alarm. But then you won't be ready for tomorrow. You'll be tired. Uh, maybe I'll. Maybe I'll just meditate for a little bit, and then I'll, I'll come tap on you. Okay. Okay. Good call. All right. I mean, it's still like late afternoon. Oh. So. Oh. Good night. Three <laughs> twenty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can go to sleep now if you want to. I just had but at least, wanna... at least the uh, Gorgonians are sitting up camp here and preparing to stay here for the time it takes for you to complete whatever oh, your God. trials Jeez. might be. Oh. So the sunlight's coming through that that hole at the top of the mm. chamber. And it it is sunlight, like it is like clearly a. Uh, nice make a nature check. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, oh wow, uh, five. Wow. Wow. Looks like sunlight, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> I bet uh, I bet Sidon would appreciate like you know planning and foresight. So since there's an entrance to this place, just in case when the sun goes down and the moon comes up, if that means bad stuff's coming in, we could always you know. Lay a little trap for something that's by the entrance. You think it's going to come in and not appear or leap from her forehead? Drop from the ceiling? I feel like it's all of the above. Come out of the earth, splintering from beneath? Well, maybe, yeah, but if this is the goddess of, like, nature, all that shit's out there. Like she summons it in? Could be. All right. Could come to the floor. Could be dramatic as hell. Hmm. Could be a forehead beam. I don't know. So you want us to make a trap? Well, I mean, just, you know, maybe encumber the way a little bit. Fortune favors the sexy. All right. And the prepared. I thought you were going to say the encumbered, but that works too. This is a lot of choices, <laughs> really. I don't, I don't know if I have any I have traps. a bunch of ball bearings. Okay, sure Because they are so the stable. <laughs> the Marisha Ray story. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bunch of ball, ball bearings. <laughs> Pocket full of bearings. I got a pocket full of cow traps as well. Is that rage? Yes, right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> this is all. <laughs> 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 all 
Cow traps actually might be a really good idea because I bet whatever's going to come in isn't wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does not strike me. Double. Like avoid. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. It's a little it's really rough, so. I mean, it, depending on the animal, too, you would just make the shoes out of the same animal. It really would just be doubling up. Yeah. Hard to plan when we know literally nothing about what's going to happen. There's a vibe. Yeah. Fine. I'm going to go uh, find a corner kind of away from everyone else. <sighs> okay. uh, far left, far right? Where are you feeling? Far left. And. Um, I'm just gonna sit down and uh, open up my mind and see if I can Ooh. sense anything in this yeah. chamber okay. around us. As you expand your consciousness a bit and let the voices in that may wish be wish to look to press their way into your consciousness, uh, you sense your allies. You sense the Gorgine, but nothing else of human intelligence piercing inward, so you feel confident, at least at the moment, that nothing of that level of intellect is in the immediate vicinity. All right. I look at the scribal. Ooh, <laughs> sure, why not? It's fine, I'm still there. <laughs> it's always good. It's, it's always good. It's probably done now. I mean, it, that's a radius of only a few miles, so. It's like a thousand feet, isn't it? It's like, is it like a thousand feet or is it like five miles or something? I'll have to look at the details again. It's not very long, but it's enough to the point where the fact that you don't see anything is a good sign. Yeah. I mean, do we have any extra rope? Uh, you cut up all the rope, I think. That's why I said extra. Rope. That was my rope. Well, that's rope. That I burned for the group. Uh, you need a rope? Well, I was just thinking to like, make like a trip trap. Yeah, at the front. Anything comes trip rushing trap. in, you can slow it down just a little bit. I still have the um, immovable rod. No, you don't. I took it off your dead body. I have it. No, I have it. You gave it to me. Uh -uh. Can I have my rod back? Yes, I I'm will. literally staring at it. <laughs> it's also in my equipment. <laughs> well, right, we got one two of you just we got two. We got two movable rods right now. Let's roll these. You're 15. rolling to role play, giving back the rod. Uh -huh. Eleven. Yeah, cool. So I, I have the rod. I have a really interesting metal bar that doesn't do anything. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Fuck yeah. Watch while I come up with a great fucking plan for this metal bar. Yes. Would you like it back? I would like it back. All right, I'm unequipping mm. it. It's all yours. But we could, you know, I could put it on this end, we could tie a little rope or a vine and then fasten it to something on the other side and then put ball bearings up front. This sounds great. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, we do that. All right. As you go ahead and set up that kind of entry, and there are, you see there are like two splinter tunnels from where you came, there's the one you came through, and then there's one to the right of it that continues off kind of an other direction, but you don't see any light source or anything in there, you haven't really checked it out. I so. warn the rest of the Gorgine that I'm dumping a bunch of ball bearings. They kind of D and D's look. most dangerous weapon. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You said there's another light source, but we haven't checked it out. Well, there's another tunnel. There's another tunnel. Oh, everything yeah. was collapsed in, but there is a separate exit. Well, from, like, from, from where you're in the room, you don't see any other, and then you need to turn back around from where you came. It looks like there's like a second entrance to uh, the right of it, but it just kind of continues going in the direction of where you came from, just a little bit off to the right. Okay. Well, we should check that out. Yeah. I mean. Sure. Yeah. I'll stay put. Brief glance into it, about 15 or so feet, it is collapsed. Okay. It is a filled tunnel. Yeah. It goes forever, I'll be back in a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, as they finish lighting all the flames, and you can now smell the burning of incense, kind of a, a strong, pungent, almost like a, 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 a sage smell with a, a strange, kind of acerbic, citrusy smell, and it fills the air. It's strong, but it definitely seems to cleanse the musky sense that approached you as you arrived, as the kind of incense smoke begins to burn throughout the chamber. Uh, Annalyn turns around to you. Chetney. If you are to call upon Sayadon for guidance, you must concentrate, meditate, offer yourself to her mercy and wisdom, shed your ego, Hmm. And let your timeless nature bloom within. She steps away from the center, and the rest of the Gorgine kind of move, all five of them move to different corners of the chamber, almost forming a loose circle on the perimeter outside of it. This is. Okay. 
I'll uh, I'll kind of go go offset, sort of crisscross applesauce in front of the statue. <clears throat> Before you start, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. It's just I want, want, I want you to succeed so so bad, yeah. so bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just gonna tap you on the shoulder and, and say you got this, pal. And I'll, I'll I'll cast enhance ability. Boy, what do I enhance? What are you about to do? Talk? Uh, maybe. maybe. Yeah, wisdom couldn't maybe hurt. Wisdom. All right. Yeah. I'll Listen, do that. You're like is. My charisma's dog shit, but whatever. So you're installing <laughs> a meditation. No, 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 right no, 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 because you're about to be yeah, talking. Maybe. Maybe. Boy, I don't Could know. Be. Talking? Are you feeling? Are you thinking? Char charisma love is my lowest attitude. I'll do charisma okay. then. Okay. That that does. Was that a wisdom. plus to something or a damage? Yeah, uh, it's a damage on all. Okay. Thank you. For now. Yeah. All right, I'll shit. I'll shit. I'll focus myself. Close my eyes. Sayadon, Jenny Pockaby here, C Pop Industries. <laughs> I know it's taken me four centuries to get to this point, but I'm here to make a difference. I look at your influence as a blessing, and I want to be straight with you. I'm going to use this for personal gain, but only a little bit. I've seen a lot of shitty things in the world, and some of that stuff needs a, a force to push it back. I'd like to do that at times. And also, I have personal beef I'd like to squash. On the side, after I've done some good. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I am willing and open to any wisdom that you could share. There's a pause. You hear this loud crunching sound. <laughs> you glance over and you see Monada sitting in the corner, kind of chomping on a, looks like some sort of a hard vegetable. And Bro! Sorry, I'd, you're going to be there a while. Am I, am I doing this right so far? I think so. Okay. Just be open, I guess, and patient. <laughs> An hour goes by, two hours, and the tension that you felt as you arrived and set up for this begins to ease as you all kind of settle into almost a, a boundary between impatience and boredom at times. Eventually, the sunlight that peeks through shifts darker, and you can ascertain that the sun sets leading into a moonlit night from within. Now the sunbeam, while it has faded, is replaced with a moonbeam. This moonbeam doesn't shift. In fact, Katha is not up in the sky, not at an angle that it would be visible at this point, but there is indeed a shaft of gentle moonlight that just kind of peers through that hole above and the lights the interior of this darkened chamber. The sconce light just kind of flickering. Oh, oh. I knew it. You catch a sweetness in the air. Sweetness. The faint smell of, of sharp decay and honey, followed by a wave of strong iron. You feel a presence arrive. And that's where we go to break. Oh! oh! The presence arrived. Was... That's Santa. <laughs> oh my God! He already got all the presents. <laughs> where be? It's time for work. Where Anyway. Shit. Okay. 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 Come back into okay. this yeah. after our break. Uh, it's been a little bit. We need to go to our break. Yes. Uh, yeah. We'll see you here in a few minutes, and we'll pick up where that left off. See you in a second. <laughs>
Hey Critters, Laura Bailey here to guide you through what's new in the Critical Role shop. This is pretty badass. I mean, the Traveler always says impulse purchases are a good decision. This holiday season, give the gift of effortless style. Oh, so comfy cozy. This is seriously magical. Roll an investigation if you want. It's basically perfect. Aww, they're so mini. And hey, if you want, you could head over to the Critical Role shop right now. so good with these big chonky socks on and these long johns because I feel like I'm wearing footy pajamas. I really want to play it's pretty Nintendos. Great. Are you trying to get your feet on wiki feet? Why are you playing with your feet so much? they are. Boys or girls or Raise that score. Runs Stop the it. website. Stop it. Sure vote. Is it God's fucking break up the God player. cage? I'm going to play her. Is there a rule that a dog can't play basketball? <laughs> Am I passing gas now? Yes or no? No, I don't think you would do it with a microphone on you, just in case. But I would. <laughs> does that come with a butt flap? It does have a butt flap. Yep, oh, look at that. Show everybody. Yeah, now we're with butts. Channel of your choice through Prime Gaming. 
So why not use that tranquil little freebie on a Critical Role subscription? Just remember to resubscribe every month. Oh. Am I doing this right? Or Oh, sorry. Um. Am I doing this right? You can also gift subscriptions to fellow critters. So what are you waiting for? Start spreading that sweet serenity with a Twitch subscription to Critical Role. It's like a warm blanket. Oh, oh hold on. It's my proctologist. Just give me a second. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello? Oh, hey, hey, Doc. Yeah. What? What's up? What do you mean more teeth? I thought you got rid of them all. Well, no. You don't tell me to relax. I'm the one with teeth up my. Subscribe. Welcome back. So, as all of you have kind of found your spaces in the chamber here with Chetney at the base of the central statue, surrounded by other statues in various states of standing and or being toppled and crushed as the ages have taken their toll, the Gorgine have also separated to the outer edges as the darkness of nightfall has come and the singular shaft of moonlight, white and thinned, finds its way into the chamber, the water still trickling out from the top and kind of spreading out amongst and around the central statue, with all of the offering set at the base, and as you sit there and meditate over this time, that smell begins to change. This presence begins to hang in the air, like a, an invisible mist that weighs within all of your lungs. You can feel this like faint vibration in the ground. Not rhythmic, not thrumming, but just a continuous. Orm and Frank, you both roll perception checks for me, please. Oh, shit. Not great. Mm. 15 for me. 19. 19. You, you make out just the faintest bit of this, but more so for you, Fern. You almost see a wisp of a shape seem to drift through the mist of the falling trickle of water. Almost like a hand passes through it, but it seems to sh shift and take its own form, like there's a glimmer of something there, like a, a ghost or some sort of a spectral movement. Right as this happens, Chetney, you feel emotions begin to 
build up from inside you that aren't your own. Images that fill your head like shapes and smoke. There's not language there, but you can interpret intent, questions, to where the emotion and imagery still pierces to your heart. And you know the spirit's present. Are you hunter or prey? <clears throat> hunter. You are hunter and prey. Are you yearning for freedom or indulgence? Freedom. You are a fool. Do you see to the garden or spoil the earth? Spoil the earth. You are a catalyst. I smell it within you. The blessing. The curse. The curse. Go. When you feel that that burning red, for a second you close your eyes and you can see the red flare between your lids. As you open once more. If I take one, I take a part of you with me and leave a part of me with you. The emotions seem to be less scattered and more focused. Do you accept my trial? Yes. All the Gorgine in the chamber stand up. Oh no. And close their eyes together as one, and as they open them once more, there is a pale blue mist that kind of drifts out of their open eyes. Oh no. <coughs> sure, it's yes. fine. Sure, it's fine. And they just stand there, all looking to the center of the chamber where the statue and Chetney are. at me, as you say yes, and you watch the Gorgine flicker on as still guardians. Chetney, you feel that, that red, that, that, that burning tether to the ruddy moon be tugged and pulled, and you feel that, that tickle, that that urge to give in, that hunger, that that violence, that that necessary allure, that that howl, that call, that beckoning, that thirst, that taste of blood and running earth and flesh, that the rush, the flow, the leap, the climb, the tear, the growl, the hunger, the bite, the snarl, the break. It all boils and churns and churns and pulls and pushes from within. It's pushing out, it's pushing out. It must be free, you must be free. You must give in to this. It is here, it is now, it is within and it is out. It must be out. The rest of you watch as this mist that's drifting off of the waterfall within begins to splash down heavily. The water begins to come down like a waterfall almost onto and around Chetney. And as it does, the mist seems to gather in a light within the moonlight. And as it does, you watch Chetney tumble over and begin to bulge. The shoulders begin to ripple and expand, the fur <laughs> expanding as the transformation sets in. You watch as the face pulls back and the snout of the wolf begins to push out and it grows larger and larger. Bigger than you've seen Chetney emerge as its arms reach out the length of almost eight feet on each end. The claws extend. The white fur begins to burn outward like a massive mat of 
cloak like fur, a carpet of continuous snow white spines out of the body. The teeth extend, slobbering, growling. The, the, the spittle itself almost carrying a ruddy liquid coloration to it. It spatters onto the ground, lost almost amongst the fall of the water itself. As Shannon begins to spin, you see that same kind of blue, misty glow in his eyes amongst the other Gorgine. The water is still scattering across the shoulders. Ah! Oh no! Oh boy! Guys, crack open your paints. The newest <laughs> set of pre prime miniatures from WizKids is available now at your local game store. Check out the entire Critical Role collection at wizkids.io. Oh, oh, wow. Slash CR minis. Did you inhale some popcorn? I had popcorn right before I started <laughs> speaking. Whereabouts of the rest are you set up? Colonel, go down the wrong pipe. Uh -huh. Oh dear. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. All right. So the Gorgine well, are like yeah, fully like spread. Gorgine. Okay, they're like perfectly spread out. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. We were uh, up front. Um, doing the, the, the trap. Yeah, I was human the making collapse. that trap. <clears throat> Where's the trap? Like in that corner. Uh, I mean, there's a few. I'll show you in a second. Okay, in the center. I, I would be close to him because I just touched him to. to I mean, you touched him and you backed away, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Backed away. But, yeah, no, that's good. There. Yeah, okay. Great. I can be closer. So, Who's that closer? that you're holding? Yeah. This is Imogen, but whoever wants to be placed. Next. Imogen, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladna can be over here in this <clears throat> corner. You got it. Which one of these is the collapsed? This is the collapsed one here. I'll say that I'm near that. That was the last time I placed myself anywhere. So um, cool. I'd probably be hanging out by that weird little, like in that little V section, actually a little close, like statues. Away from me, like uh, here. Yeah, but forward towards you, right there. Yeah, there right go. there. Um, and I would be by that little like lit, lit up area over, over there. Here? Yeah. Shoot his loot. Uh, okay. I'm gonna hang out with Aura. Over here. Uh, other side. Over here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see the green glow. You've got it. I, I didn't either. And have you had Mister out with you? I imagine. Oh right? yes. We're about to do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's put him on my left. All right. Oh no. So we're fighting Gorgine, or you're or fighting, or, or, or we're fighting. Oh, oh. fighting all. Oh. 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 Why is this the most beautiful thing I've ever seen? He's so big. Oh. Here's your wow. stat sheet, Chetney. He's bigger than Grog. Oh my God. That name is interesting. Chetney Paco. I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh my Whoa. God. Oh so what are we, my what God. Are we, what are we? Are we a part of? What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we doing? Trial. <laughs> oh no, what the fuck? Oh, oh. Take it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> hey. mm, okay. All right. 25 to 20. 25. Oh. Right. 20. 23. Whoa. Whoa. Hang on, hang on, wait, hang on. That was. Uh... Orm Imogen Fern. Orm Imogen Fern? Mm hmm. Don't we just all wake up? 20 to 15? No one used it. 16. Mm. Okay. I'm like our new one. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, what was it Ashen? Uh, I'm off for, after Fern and then, Check yeah, Chucky's after me. That was a uh, long time ago. I, I know, I'm only 11. Yeah. <laughs> Scarf, I was 11. Five. All right. Eleven. Oh, so it's Would you roll? Lana the nurse. He's sixteen. So, so it's Orem, Imogen, Burn, Ashton, Chetney, Lana, FCG. I think. Chetney, FCG. No, Chetney. So, do you Lata. understand Lana FCG? Yes. Oh boy. I think I'll figure it out. I don't like any of this. Wait. Yeah. What are we? What who are, are we fighting? I don't even know who we're fighting, we though. Exactly. Orem. You're up first. Yeah, uh, chaotic energy transform. in here. No idea what's going on yet. So I'm, all I'm going to do is hold my action. I'm going to attack any any threat that attacks Orem or Fern. That's it. Okay, well you're holding your position there. Yes. You got it. Imogen, you're up. Yes. Um, this could be a fight. Or I know. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it could be just a dance. Um, or I don't. Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One second, it all happened so quickly. Um, okay, I'm going to. Dip some board. I'm gonna cast fly on myself. Cool. Cast fly on yourself. And you get up it. and 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 go up. Go out the hole and leave. 
I'm go straight up and out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> How far are you flying? It's a forty foot ceiling in here, so. All right. I'll just kind of go up to the top. Okay. And hold on to a some of the vines up there. All righty. Oh, you're way over there. Shit. That was a very good call. All righty. Finishes your turn. Fern, you're up with Ashton on deck. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, I am just. Going to uh, ooh, you know what? I'm going to whisper to my um, staff of the Adam, and I'm going to I'm going to whisper to my staff and tell them to wake up, get ready okay. just in case. You got it. Oh, can I use my bonus action? Sure. And just to chat, I'm just going to go, chat, in his head. Mm-hmm. What's happening? The minute you reach into the head, oh boy. you feel returning to you. This wave of ancient will that shuts you out. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. The person you've reached. All right. Not a <laughs> so with that, finishes your go. Fern, you were you between your adder and you're staying there. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay. Um, I'm gonna take a few steps to my left to just get in the way of anything that might. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to rage and hold my action for whatever comes anywhere. Well, it's actually, I should rage first to see what the fuck's going to go on. You got it. Oh, okay, that's fun. Okay, um, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, I'm just going to hold my my action until something no, something weird happens. All right. Uh, as long as uh, also uh, Imogen uh, Ladna's within 15 feet of me. Just double checking. Ladna is currently yes. Perfect. Okay. Is okay. That good or bad? That's good. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Finishing your turn brings us to Chetney. Chetney. You can put so much wolf in this town. Yeah. <laughs> Rip, sunder, tear, devour. What do you do? <laughs> uh, Start of my turn. Okay. So that is your max up top. So you can't go higher than what okay, you have. Okay. Good deal. Higher. Good deal. Oh boy. Uh, I'm going to turn. This, okay. Yeah, I mean, I just see uh, FCG standing in front of me, right? Yeah. But I just look down uh, and I will, uh, with a bonus action, I will <laughs> drag, my, drag my claws across my left arm. And you see flames come up out of my claws, and I'll swipe down at FCG. Oh, but not this again! Why are you trying to kill us, Chet? And Lynn did ask if we were willing to take him down. All right, let's make your attacks against FCG. Okay. It's happening again. <laughs> Once again, we're turning on each other <laughs> again. Who has to take him down? Oh no! I think we, do. we are literally our own worst enemies. <laughs> Uh, yeah. 20, uh, 22 to hit. That hit? 22, yeah. Okay. Plus four, uh, plus another, nine. Uh, so that's 11, 11 points of damage. <laughs> three of that is fire damage. Okay. I take three. Fire. Do you have fire claws? Yeah. I'm gonna use my. Yeah, his blood right chip. Uh. Chitney, no! It's me! Fresh cut grass, your friend! (laughs) (laughs) How much movement was that? Uh, That was five feet. Uh, I'll look to the right over at Mister, Mm -hmm. and I'll run over and swipe at Mister as well. Do I get an attack opportunity? You do get an attack opportunity if you like it. I'm just do gonna we, do what I've done before. Do we need to let him win? I'm gonna buzz saw him. I don't know. Natural 20. Oh! oh. oh. I assume that hits. Um, it's not very much damage. Uh, five points of damage. Double. No. Oh, five total. I mean, you double the dice, right? So that's two, four, plus one, it's five. Non magical. So. I guess so. Oh, non magical only does half damage? It is wolven form, yeah. Okay. But you do buzz past, kind of striking him as he rushes over towards Mister. 
take a swipe at Mister. Already. Natural twenty. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Wait, is he an ally? At the moment. Where he just struck you and is now going after the monkey. What do you think? Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen. He is. You have uh, some seventeen well, points of damage. Well, we do have some yeah. serious yeah. relationship oh, problems. <laughs> huh. Wait, how many hit points does Mister? Probably have? not very many. He never gets hit. Five times your druid level. Kid. Five plus your druid level. Five I mean, plus your druid level. That's yeah. twelve, isn't it? Wait, yeah. what are we? Seventh Seven. level. Wait, how, how many points That's was that? Fifteen. Seventeen. Oh yeah, um, he's out. <gasps> Oh. A poo gun clacks to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> There's just like a burst of flame and a scattering of ash, and Mister is sent from this realm. No! And I think I used the other uh, 15 feet, right? So I, that's my movement. Not well, no, that's monkey. that's plus. Oh, that's <laughs> fuck! Oh no, you guys! Uh, I'll I'll see the monkey dissipate, and I'll. <laughs> Look at Fern, and I'll close on Fern. Oh no! And swipe away. So this is attack number three. Uh, that's uh, tw uh, twenty to hit. Yes. How do you know you have to attack us? I the spirit in my head said all the bad words. Uh, so that's uh, that's eight <laughs> eight points of damage. Got it. Turns into George Carlin. Yeah, yeah. Points of fire down. Yeah. <laughs> that's my. That's my. That's my turn. Okay. So that brings us now to Ladna with FCG on deck. Oh, it's already the end of the. Uh, how did that? Okay. Uh, uh, well, yours was an attack of opportunity. Sure. I um. Never had this coming. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. I just. I. I kind of shout out. Do we let him win? What do we do? And. Uh, as I'm saying that, I start transforming into a wear tree, my form of dread. Oh. Uh, yes. uh, I'm going to kind of have, it, have it take on the trees that we have been passing this whole time. Nice. That like pale ash cool. with the black that starts kind of seeping up uh, from underneath, and Hell then yeah. I am going to. Um, that's a bonus action. So then I'm going to cast mirror image, and I'm going to quicken the spell and cast. Spider climb. Well, we can't do more than one spell in a turn. So one has to be a cantrip. Quicken spell. Quicken spell. You you can do a cantrip. Oh, oh wait, spell. when it moves it to a button. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, so just uh, mirror image and former dread. You got it. You got that. Mm, uh, yeah. Take your temporary hit points. Ooh, Ooh, ten. Ten. Nice. Fuck yes. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna say where I am. Okay, you got it. Finish Lana's turn. Uh, do you know how the legendary actions work? What? You can do them at the end of somebody else's turn if you'd like. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. Wait. Wait. Oh. Is he supposed oh, to win or lose? Yeah. Don't That's know. right. I said that out loud. Uh, I said I said it to all of you. I'll take another uh, swipe at Fern. Okay, go ahead and I make another strike. Has to win because if we if it all clears and I think if one of us gets, well, let's find out. Fuck. Uh, 20, 22? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What if he's supposed to be fighting the Gorgon and we're just here's witnesses? Thir 13 points of damage. Okay. Can't wait for campaign 3.5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is why you were so excited when I when I said there could be a TPK today. And you were like, uh, no. Always makes sense. Talking to a TPK, one of you will survive. <laughs> The giant wolf one. <laughs> oh, what if? Boy. Oh boy! <laughs> what if? It, what if you? All what right, that finished the turn. Losing. What if? FCG, just, you're up. Have to, to like, dodge him or something? No. What if he just has to like? This is a test to see how. If he how, overcomes it. If he yeah. overcomes it or can control it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. It'll be so easy for him to control it if we knock him unconscious. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna do my action to do sympathetic binding. Okay. Definitely on Fern and Orem. Okay. But also, boy, I'm gonna try to mentally connect with Chetney. I know he's not an ally, but we're we're fast friends or whatever it's called. What's it called? Okay. We're, Seriously. We're, tri we're a trusted companion, so I'm gonna try to push through whatever blockage there is and make a connection with his mind. Okay. Uh, I will say. 
Go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw, Chetney. Okay. Okay. Is this magic? This would be magic. No, I mean, yeah, it's a magic effect, so yeah. I have advantage on it. Uh, 14. That's my spell casting whatever. That's your spell DC, is 14? Yeah. So the binding connects, but you have no, like you're, you're bound, but you're still hitting this, like this wave of, of ancient force. There is will there that is beyond language, but it is holding you back as you try and connect with Chetney. It's just like, like a hand there is in front of you. Oh. All right. Um, well then, in that case, uh, uh, I guess with my bonus action, I will, I'll just get up a, a spiritual weapon up and ready. Okay. What form is it taking? <laughs> Dare I ask? I mean, he's a wolf, so it'll be a steak. <laughs> I, no, no, I'm just. I'm not, clearly, okay. that's, that's just bait. <laughs> no, I don't have a steak mini, but I'll go ahead and just. Like I don't know a steak. I mean, a steak through the heart. Silver steak. Oh yeah, shit! That doesn't work on werewolves. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm a robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, sounds a steak. Like it's a steak. Thought, like, it's a steak. 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 Can you hold up? Does that work on werewolves too? Steaks work on werewolves. Is that a silver bullet? It'll penetrate them. There you go. You got a steak. Like a big piece of meat. silver steak. It's a silver steak. There you go. It's floating. Up there in the air for it. Go ahead and roll your attack if you want to oh, make I can it. Attack with if you want to make okay, it. Okay, yes, I do. Uh, ten plus six, I think, to hit. Sixteen misses. The, the stake <laughs> veers off of the hard hide, kind of grinds past the fur. No impact, okay. but it exists out there. You want to stay put? I think I will. I'll All use right. a legendary action to dash. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross across fern and come uh, right about. Here. Okay, so you leap up. Yeah. <laughs> Batter up! <laughs> right in the face. Right about there. So, two things. One, Fern, you do get an attack opportunity if you want to take it. I don't, though. You do not. You're not in my range, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Tumi! Uh, no way. Or not Tumi. Tumi? <laughs> no way. No? Okay. And you get to make your two strikes? Yes, I do. Uh, Move just a little bit towards the statue. Here. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Sure. 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 I'm going to uh, reckless attack. Big hit. Let's see what happens. That's a, a to twenty-seven something to hit. Yes, that hits. Uh, all right. Let's start this uh, process and see how bad it gets. No. I don't know. to fight through. I would try and win. Twelve points of. Uh, uh, 12, uh, 12 points of damage. Great. It's, it's a magic magical. weapon, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 12 points of bludgeoning. Control his beast and control and uh, his urges, right? I'm just going to let that flip around and try and hit you right on the top of the skull, see what, what happens. Uh, and that's uh, 22 to hit. Uh, that hits. All right. Mm, that's ooh, 15 points of damage. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah. All righty. So you leap over, land right as Asher <laughs> double slams you kind of across the face and the side of the chest. You kind of get pushed up against the side of the stone wall, catch yourself, and then right back to your position there. Nice. Uh, so that finishes if you just back at the top of the round. Forum. It's your turn. What, and then the Gorgine did nothing. They're just the Gorgine still are just standing there, just standing. watching. Uh, okay, so Orem is going to. Oh, shit, I'm going to run. Five, 10, 15. Here. Leap up here. And I'm going to yell out to say, Chet, you in there? You didn't bring us here for this, did you? And I'm going to pull out a three quarters finished. A uh, little wooden wolf that's really crudely carved and not done, uh, and I hold it out. This was for you. I guess it's now or never. You in there, big guy? <laughs> and that's my turn. Okay. Uh, a, wolf a wolf that I've been carving. Adorable. 
Go ahead and make a uh, make a persuasion check with advantage. I'm terrible at persuasion. With advantage. Uh, 17, straight roll. 17. As you kind of right yourself from the slams of uh, the hammer across your body, you hear the voice and <clears throat> look back towards it, and you see the crudely shaped carving, and there's that strange kind of like, like a shooting pain in your head for a second, and in that shooting pain, for right behind your eyes, you see that red flare once more as you kind of close them instinctually. You see uh, in the middle of the chest, kind of around the sternum between the fur, a little bit of like red smoke kind of <sighs> begins to trickle out. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's nighttime. I know. Yeah. So I thought I heard we still had. Oh, this spell. Sorry, I think meant like. Yeah. Okay, got it. Is that finished? So, so just like a plume of red smoke exiting the chest? Yeah. <laughs> Almost like a little like no, stream no. Of, of just like red smoke. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. That finishes Orm's go. If that's the end of his turn. I'll use uh, my final legendary action, and I will use Howl of the Hunter. Oh no! It takes two actions to do that. Oh, it does. It does. That's right. Sorry. Right. Okay. So you can't do that one. Fair. 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 But at the top of your next turn, you get all your actions back. That's so. right. Okay. All right. So that brings us to Imogen with Fern on deck. Did I see that happen? With Orm. Uh, you saw, yeah, you heard Orm shouting this out and kind of clutching it out there and watching kind of the, the wolf form kind of like reel from it for a second and that little faint bit of red trail smoke on it. Uh huh. Um, all right, I'm going to. I'm going to try to reach into Chet's mind and just lash him really fast <laughs> and cast blindness. On okay, him. you got it. I think that's a constitution saving throw? Yes, it is. Please go ahead and make a constitution saving throw, Jenny. It is magic, so you have a damage. <coughs> oh. oh. That's really good. Uh, that's a 21 to save. <laughs> <laughs> you watch as Chetney's eyes close for a second, and as the wolf opens them once more, that like bright blue glowing mist <laughs> seems to just shatter the incantation before it can take hold. Before he thinks about where <laughs> I am, I'm going to fly across the cavern to the other side. Okay, to the other side over here? Yep. <laughs> and I'm going to grab onto a vine up there. And how far can you move, like, 60 feet? Uh, yeah. All right, that'll put you at. Um, yep, that's about right. I want to get out of his. I'm going to try to go like. Over here? Yeah. You got it. Wait, okay. so and I'm going to get a foot on a vine and like hold onto it too, so I'm like standing up on a vine. Okay. Like, kind of holding on it up there. Perfect. Got to finish his images. Go, Fern. You're up with Ashton on deck. What are we doing, Ash? Oh God. Um. Uh, <coughs> are we hurting him, or are we trying to? I don't know. Please with him, baby. Uh, all right. Uh. Shit. This is gonna. I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna attack because he just hurt my kid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. All right, scorching ray. Okay. Go for it. So that's three rays if you're casting it at a base level. Base level. Uh, fifteen for the first one. Scorching ray. Nineteen for the first second one. Okay. Uh, natural nineteen. That hits. Yeah. Okay. Sister's <coughs> not there. Two d six fire damage. Okay, seven. Seven points of fire damage to each enemy. <coughs> one ray strikes you. The other one just kind of go wide and hit the stone cavern interior around you. Um, do you stay put, Fern? Anything else you want to do? That's uh uh. I'm going to move a little closer to him. All right. 10 feet? 15 yes. feet? That's 10 feet there. Uh, let me get within distance of him. Whoa. Or like close up. Close up? Yeah. All right. We're in melee right there. Get that, ass. that finishes your go, Fern. Ashton, you're up yeah. with Chetney on deck. Okay. <sighs> Uh, 
I'm going to ready for a couple more strikes, but before I do... Come on, buddy. I want to fight the real you. This is bullshit. Get that shit out of there. Uh, yeah, I'll do a, I'll, I'll do reckless attack again. And I actually no, I don't have to because we're in. A, I'm in. A, a, we've, we're he's a. You can move to get into a concert. I'll move. I'll move to get into it. Yeah, there we are. Get you about there. Thank you. Oh god. Oh no. It's okay. Go ahead. And here we go to hit again. Oh, that's yeah. That hits. That's like twenty-five to hit. Oh yeah, hits yeah. <clears throat> yeah yeah. Uh, that's uh, fifteen points of damage. Yes. <laughs> Another heavy hammer hit to like the probably the lower hip area. <clears throat> Does it seem like it's doing fuck all? It's doing damage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And here we go again. Nope, uh, that's 12 to hit. Matt misses. Take the second swing, you go ahead and try and swing to the second strike and <laughs> Without even realizing it, Chetney, you just <laughs> the claw grabs the hammer and holds it in place and almost kind of begins to lift up Ashton from the hammer slightly. Starting to have a, like a little bit of a, the red blue flashes on either side of the hammer and the head's starting to go and starting to vibrate a little bit out of sync. Come on, man. <laughs> We'd have a lot more fun. <clears throat> this is not the way I wanted to do this. <laughs> Turn. At the end of his turn, I'll use my last legendary action, mm. and I'll take the hammer that I caught in my hand and just smash it back into his face. <laughs> I love it. Uh, which is with advantage because he was reckless. I was not reckless. He was actually not reckless. On your held turn, you were. That's and true. Yeah. It's still up. Yeah. Oh, what? Well, let's no, see. it's not. It still up, I just took my turn. Technically, I think it's. Oh, is it until the? That's right. Yeah. It's until your next turn. Until the beginning yeah. of the. Burn. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Take got, it. It's a natural 20. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's all right. He's, 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 that's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, You're fine. Uh, of course, he's a barbarian. Of course, we'll see. he's fine. I, I, but I'm not going to hold my reaction. 11, oh, 6, 12. Put your hands up like this, Matt. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, tw- yeah. 20, 20 points with 3 know. points of fire damage. So 20. 20 points, so that's 13 points of damage. Uh, actually, if these attacks are considered magic. But they're all sword. considered magic? Oh, Fuck my life. So will, that's 23 points of. I will take half of that. Thank you. Okay, there you go. It's so 11 points of damage to you, 12 to you. Wow. And 11 to her hit points on you per round. Mm. Alrighty. Start of my turn, I'll, I'll use my bestial regeneration. Well, it, yeah, okay. To regain uh, 11 points of. <laughs> Damn. Good to know. Yeah. You're, I'm also you going to regenerate. start, since you're starting your turn, I'm going to uh, institute temp, uh, Temporal Morass, so uh, make a constitution saving ass. throw. Okay. Uh, against some number. What the shit are we doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, come on! It's a 20, 22. Okay, I guess I have advantage on it. It's not another 20. I'm burning them out, everybody, it's fine. So yeah, that just just yeah, that does not an unnatural twenty. No, <laughs> does not succeed. This is a an unnatural force of nature that is pushing through this this cavern now. Chetney is just a a a monstrous beast, hungrily tearing through and rushing and leaping from place to place. This is uh, this is an intimidating space. Yep. Does that finish your go? Uh, I mean, that's oh, yeah. that was so my, you're taking your turn. That was my uh, bullshit. Yeah, I, the the guy with the hammer hurt me a lot, <laughs> so I'll take all three of my swings oh, at him. All righty. Uh, which are not an advantage, though. That's good. Taking all three at. I'm Ash. taking all three. Yeah. Uh, Nineteen to hit. Uh, that hits. Okay. Uh, the second one is a natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> that's three. Uh, I'll do it, I'll do it. Silvery Barb's that one. Thank you. I just see Ashen being pummeled. And I just take the rock and kind of like jettison it in front of of Chetney to distract him. And then I'm going to take that and immediately give you advantage on whatever you're going to roll again. Silvery Barb's. That does it. Silvery Barb's. Yeah, you don't have. It's not a saving throw that okay, you have to take against. You just have to re-roll it. Beautiful. Oh, I just re-roll it. Yeah, you roll. You roll the attack. On what you just did. Oh, a disadvantage. Okay. No. Well, no, you, no, 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 no,
Oh, okay. Which is so 15 plus eight. Still good. 23. Not hits. Not so okay. two hits in the third oh, strike. Damn. Natural on what? There you go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Third strike misses. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, don't, I wasn't expecting this. I love it. It's great. Okay, so one. Stressing me out. Six. Six, so 12 points of damage on the first one. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, and I take six. 12 points of damage. Okay. Oof. And then. Second. 13 on the second one. Okay. Um, and the third one missed. Yeah. Uh, and on oh, the. Fuck me. And you have an advantage on your next attack roll ability throw or saving throw. All right. Yeah, I'll stay, I'll, and I'll stay right there. Okay, stay right there? Yep. All right, that finishes your turn, Chetney. Laudna, you're up with FCG on deck. Uh, Laudna just goes, nope, 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 and I cast Spider Climb, and Thank I you. climb up the wall. Okay. Uh, up all, and away. All 30 feet? Yeah. Okay, we'll put you up around here, we'll say. Fine. And then I'm we'll gonna go and um, seeing Chet his wounds heal. I'm going to now quicken a spell, and I'm going to cast Chill Touch on him. You got it. All right, mm -hmm. that is that you can do that. So Chill Touch is that an attack roll for you, or is that a saving throw? On um, it a Constitution save is. Uh 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 uh. uh. Oh Sorry, boy. I didn't. Is <laughs> a ranged spell attack from you? So, so I have to. Yes. <laughs> I I didn't see that word. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is much worse. <laughs> Those are on top of. Okay. Oh boy. Shit, that's not good. Um, fifteen. This is really cool. <laughs> uh, Does fifteen hit? Fifteen hit you? No. Okay. So the shield, <laughs> as you release it, as, as you're climbing up the wall, you go ahead and strike out with it. But the the combat that's currently going beneath uh, with Ashton and the massive wolven form of Chetney, it just swings wide and goes through the center of the fray. Unfortunately. Fuck. Did I finish your turn? Yes. FCG, you're if up that's at the end of her turn, I will now use those two legendary actions to do Howl of the Hunter. Oh, okay. what? All creatures within 30 feet of you must make a DC 16 wisdom saving throw or become frightened for one minute. Oh. Uh, so that is. I'm immune to being frightened. You are. So you are unaffected by it. <laughs> you are the terror that flaps in the night. So that's everyone except for Imogen. And what DC that? sixteen wisdom. Yes. That's what about? Oh wait. Um, Why am I doing that? What about the Gorgines standing? Oh, by I do have advantage. Him? Nope, they are unaffected by that. Uh, come on. God, I watched it and then it teetered. That no, that I'm. Mm, yeah, that wasn't. I was only a little cocky. No. No. So Ashton is frightened. Fuck. Uh, you can be frightened while you're raging. Wait. Yeah. It's that. That's it's a. a that's a berserker barbarian yeah, right. ability. Oh. Not too yeah. Boy. Wait. That's <laughs> <laughs> all good. I got a twenty-three. <laughs> twenty-three. You were fine. Twenty-three. You're fine. <clears throat> or I failed with the six. Oh right. no. Oh dear. So oh, you please. you were both fine. Uh, or sorry, you were you were both fine, but okay. and, and, and didn't keep fine. continue to make the save at the end of your turn. Yeah. But until then, you cannot. Move closer. You cannot move towards mm -hmm. Chetney at all, and all of your attacks are at disadvantage. Oh yep. no, those are all bad right. for those guys. So working on it. That's... That finishes your turn. Yes, uh, Ladna. <laughs> you're, uh, you're up with FCG on deck. I think went Me? Yeah. I thought I thought she I just went too. She did. Oh, so, oh sorry. Oh, that, sorry. That was your your legendary, legendary action. So Orm, you're up. No, um, no FCGs. Oh, because oh. you didn't take yours. You're right. Sorry. Okay. I should attack or not. Uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um, I've, I have yeah, yeah, nearly I, half I, I, my I, HP yeah. down, so you know whatever yeah. you want to do. You what? I have nearly half my HP down, so you know whatever you want to do is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting that out there. Yeah, but I'm trying to get through to Chetney. All right, I'll do that right. next turn then. I'll shoot uh, a. I'll sh I'll just shoot. Uh, I'll shoot a. Um, what do you call it? My bolt thrower at him. From okay. Here. Um, just rolling an attack. You got it. Okay. Natural twenty. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Okay. For a twenty-three. Yeah, that's well, it's natural twenty, so it automatically hits. So go ahead and roll your dice damage for the bolt thrower, and then double that, and then add the rest of your four. Modifier. So eight. Oh whoa. Uh, plus eleven. Indeed. 
So that would be 19. 19. It is not magical. No, it is not. So that would be nine points of piercing damage to you. Okay. Just shot from behind by some unknown source. Um, and then I guess as my bonus action, if you're really looking hurt there, Ash. A little down. Word is just so lame. I mean, that's I mean, that may be a hold for later thing. So, um, do some crazy shit. No, 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 that's fine. I'll get a little. I'll get close enough to to throw a healing word to Ashton. I'll do it at second level. You can do it from over here. Please. Is it the thirty foot range or sixty foot range? Uh, I think it's sixty foot, isn't it? it might be. In which case, you can do it from back where you were. Yeah. Oh, it's sixty. You're right. Yeah, you I'll stay it. there then. Okay. Ah! Two. Four. Five points, nope. Uh, seven points of damage. Seven uh, points healing. of healing yeah. to you, Ashton. Take it. Alrighty. And then if I'm near, if I'm still near the, the statue, I'm just gonna kinda get even closer to the statue, just kinda like right under her lap. You got it. Chetney, please! You're killing me over here! <laughs> 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 All right, that finished up. So you just go, now it is Orem with Imogen on deck. Okay, question, is Fern's, Fern's in melee, right? Yes. Okay, so I can't get any closer, but I can stay in the same circle. So Orm, scared to death, like sword sort of shaking as he uh, steps down here, is going to come down and crawl under Fern's space and use bait and switch to take her place. I'm not getting any closer. I push Fern back. Well, you were 10 feet from him. Am I? There, you were 10 feet up here. All right. Uh, and all and that so, thing goes away. Unfortunately, yeah. It's, okay. You have to keep a 10 foot distance from it. And then I gotta think something in five seconds. Um. This decision brought to you by WizKids. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, I'm going to instead stay within 10 feet. I'm not gonna leave. Mm. Actually, I will go back there. Okay. And I'm gonna pull uh, one dagger at the back of my boot and throw the throw the blade at the spot where I saw the red smoke coming out. Okay, let's go it's ahead. It's a and disadvantage. It's a disadvantage with range attack. Uh, that is uh, 14, I'm sure it doesn't hit. This is 14, unfortunately, yeah, does not hit. And I'm gonna go again. Uh, that, that'll hit, that's a 24. Oh uh, yeah, that hits. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm gonna make uh, this a um, goading attack. Uh, and try to get it right in that spot where the where I saw red smoke coming out. It's you not going to do a lot of damage, but that is uh, one plus five is six plus the six. Thirteen points of damage, and you have to beat a wisdom of sixteen. Is that thirteen halved? Is magical weapon? It's, it's not magical. Not magical. Okay, so it's so seven. Six. Six. Uh, and the wisdom saving throw is? 16. Natural one. Okay, so attacks against anyone else but me are at disadvantage, and I will back up another 10 or 15 feet away from Chetney. You got it. Can I use legendary resistance against that goading attack? Yeah, if you thing? want to. Yeah. You can. So I'll resist the goading feature. Fuck. Action surge, I'll throw again. <laughs> oh, God, there we go. Uh, miss. Uh, that probably misses too. Eight. 16. Misses. Yeah, that's it, I'm done. Damn. All the daggers are out of your boot. Damn. One strikes. The dagger that is sunk in there, though, it's like kind of partially in there from the hilt, and the smoke yeah. you can see is more of it's pouring out now. It's like actually like a, like a, almost like a red flare on the side of the road. It's just this like red smoke that's pouring out of that section of the chest. Uh, at the end of his turn, I'll, I'll just spin in place. Mm-hmm. And who's in who's in melee at the dagger being thrown? Is it just Fern right there? Or Fern is, right there, yeah. Yeah, I'll take a swipe at Fern. Okay. Oh, no, not Fernie. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, that's not that's not a lot for uh, twelve to hit. Oh, do I? No. Yeah, misses. Miss fear. Okay. My turn. I'll make a wisdom saving throw. This is a crap roll. Uh, yeah, that'll probably do it. That's uh twenty. <clears throat> twenty. You are no longer frightened. Oh, that's good. I s- Alrighty. So, finishing Orem's go, taking the strike at Fern. Fern, you dodge just out of the way as the claw <clears throat> slams into the side of the stone. It's your turn, what do you do? All right. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna give something a go. Um, I am going to change into a wolf. 
Okay. Oh. Um, changing into a wolf. Changing into a wolf. This is getting yeah, weird. Sexy. Guys. Yes, and I'm gonna try to change into like a like a sexy wolf. <laughs> like a sexy wolf. Like a, <laughs> yes. One of the aspects of Wait. the wolf. Yeah, sexy. sexy. Um, are you trying her, to her like confidence? Yes, yeah. yeah. her confidence. Her smiles. Yeah. I'll, use a, I'll use a yes. fox to make perfect. it a sexy wolf. Perfect, perfect. Oh, nice. That's what foxes are. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> foxes are sexy wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Chetney. <laughs> hey, um, you just gotta power through and just look at look at me right now and remember remember who you are, okay? You gotta you gotta fight through. You you're, gotta fight through. You're a wolf, right? You are a wolf. So we hear. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you you hear exactly that sound. Um, I think I actually, Maybe but I communicate that. simple ideas with smaller, smaller beasts. Yeah. So you actually get the essence of what you're saying. Go ahead and make a persuasion check for me with advantage <laughs> in your wolven form. Roll oh, advantage. Oh my god. Advantage for sexy. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, uh. Seventeen. Okay. Okay. Seventeen. I will say, you have permanently lost one of your legendary actions. Ooh. Oh. Okay. oh. As between the, uh, and, through a couple of factors, um, so you only have two legendary actions yeah. at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, through this woven speech, something is conveyed through the, the, the language of nature, oh. through the language of the predator, and. There's an element of your your it's fury that begins to slow. Yeah. All right. Does that finish your turn? You want to stay put? She's in heat. Fucking plays a lot. Um. God, they can start fucking. <laughs> We're all just like. I'm just like. It's an enormous <laughs> werewolf and a wolf. And a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes, I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna I'm sit. So still an initiative. Nope. Honestly, I'm just I don't gonna know sit why, and wag. Tearing out your throat is it's kind of sexy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit and wag. Just sit and wag. You got it. All right. Halloween way. As you <laughs> wag away. <laughs> finishing ferns go. Ashton, you're up. Oh no, we, we jumped. Jump. We jumped. And oh, sorry. You're right. I mean, long. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work. Um, I'm gonna. Wait, was, yeah. This is a 120 foot range of this. I'm gonna. Stare down at that spot of red on Chet's chest, and I'm just gonna like focus all of my psychic energy and shoot it out and try to psychic lance the spot on his chest. Okay, all right. So is that a saving throw on his point? Yeah. All right. That would be an intelligence saving throw. Go ahead and make an intelligence saving throw. Going old baby blue here. Is that magic? It is. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, Eight. Oh, you fail. That's a failure. Okay. Um, you take seven d6 psychic damage, Ooh. and you That's are incapacitated until the start of your next turn. Oh, I, they, I would if I wasn't going to use a legendary res resistance. Oh. Yeah. But you still take the damage. Yes, oh, half the damage. Yeah. yeah. Half, half the damage. I was willing him living his best life. I got these things to do. Yeah. You're a dragon. <laughs> That's why you keep giggling at us, you motherfucker. Oh, yeah, it's not going to last forever. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. This is amazing. Seven. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. We've only got six of them. 10, 20, uh, 25. So 12 points of psychic damage to you. Cool. As it kind of strikes into your mind at the chest. <laughs> um. Make a wisdom saving throw for me. Oh! Wisdom saving Just a general wisdom saving throw. Uh, no, five. Uh, five. It's probably good. You okay? Oh, <laughs> good. is that a good thing good. or a bad thing? Probably I thought good. it was. You don't know. Okay. Um, actually, we'll wait till we get to your turn. Okay. Which is after Ashton. So we'll get to that. I'm going to take a quick. Uh, Unless you want to move, Engine, you stay put. Yeah. I will stay where I am. I'm gonna take a quick look at Laudna, see if you're okay, and just kind of have that, <sighs> shit. And I'm going to, um, <laughs> I know, I've, even though I'm, uh, I've 
can't do, do this very well. I'm going to try and swing around and do the baseball attack against the uh, uh, against the thing in the chest one more time, since it seems to be the thing that's going on. You got it. Um, I have disadvantage. I will say for the time being, mm -hmm. yeah, you have disadvantage because of the fright, and even you because you are sitting and waggling and just talking, you're not technically a threat to him at the moment, so you do not give him oh, the no. defense. Or so yeah, no, so yeah, disadvantage. Um, checks. Yeah, that's fine. Waggling. I assume this much. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to uh, just because. Got to give myself a little distance. I'm going to uh, um, go into hyper rage, so I'm just a blur now. Okay. There's just a, yeah, it's just a blur of red and blue. Is that a thing? Yeah. So I'm going to add part of this kid. Going to attack. Yeah, I it's gotta, something new every uh, time. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to go into hyper sorcery. That sucks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eleven to hit. That's bullshit. Eleven, unfortunately, like the, being unprepared for yeah. the massive burst of energy, Super you just clear. swing wide. I'm going to take another one. <laughs> and that's better. That's way better. Uh, Twenty-five to hit. Yeah, that hits. That hits. So that's my standard. Uh, out, you know, to that point. Come on. Oh, that's not bad. Fifteen points to to right in the center. Awesome. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my third attack to disengage. Okay. And I am a fucking blur. <clears throat> and I am going. I'm going to give myself a little room. Um, I'm going to pull back to like. Oh god, where do I want to go? But you can go twice your speed. Though. I can go 80 feet, so yeah. I can go anywhere I fucking want. Um, let's go. Um, yeah, let's go back behind that pillar. Yeah, just keep going that way for a while. There and just yeah, well, and just right behind the pillar. I'm just gonna use a little cover right here. Wow. Yeah, you got it. And then I'm gonna do my saving roll. Hyper speed, hyper rage. So you just quicksilver like strikes, and then just arcs yeah. off in a blur of blue and red energy. You just see streak through the chamber. Uh, ten. Wisdom save. Wisdom save? For You're still frightened. That. Yep, yep. Oh, All right. Oh, I finished to go, Ashton. As long as you're good. Uh, I'll use my. On the ceiling. Uh, bestial regeneration. Well, you do not get your bestial regeneration this turn. Okay. Wait, what? Why? I don't know. Aha! Uh, okay, okay. Maybe because he's been hit in the chest so many times. I've been hit in the heart. Oh. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> uh, there's Shut a small. The heart. There's a small wolf in front of me that talked, and that's strange. Yep, and there are mm. there are two women who are like holding onto the walls on the sides <laughs> of the chamber that are jumping distance, and you oh, have. Why would you say jumping distance? Why would you say jumping distance? Why would you point that out? Well, I can I can tell, but you you were up for. Are you jumping? talking about this one over here? Huh? Are you talking about Imogen as well? We Here's the other one. I mean, we'll have to see the distance you can travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna run towards uh, Ladna. God fucking damn it! And really. Yeah, oh, wolf does not skip leg day. Jump. You watch as as the fucking the bestial form of Chutney turns around, runs and leaps into the air, and is just going to go ahead and swipe down towards you. Oh no, God. no. <laughs> I feel like that's you. Uh, that's me. <laughs> like what? I feel like that's a that should be a, a actually with character. my with that's my uh, with my bonus action with my bonus. Make a disadvantage. Wait, you guys are doing. Thirty feet. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> With my bonus action, I'm going to try and do Blood Curse of Bloat and Agony on Imogen as I stare Me? at it. Step at, I'm sorry, Lodna. Oh, wow! wow. Oh, it's it's like, what, it's catching! Right. It's yeah. catching! I don't know! <laughs> Laura Lodna, it's the elf. Yeah, I'll stare up at Lodna and, and try and, <laughs> in, in the Mugin, wolf rage, Mugin. just try and yeah, curse. Guess, uh, right. <laughs> You got, you got it. Got so wait, what are you doing? You're blowing you're uh, you me down? Give me a... Uh, a, a, a con saving throw. Oh boy. Okay. This can't be good. No. No, nope. and I think it just takes effect. No, you have to be able to save against it, right? No, you just have to, but it doesn't do anything until That's they right. do so you have, You don't need to save. Yeah, you have disadvantage on strength and dex checks, basically, and some other stuff. So you just suddenly feel like this this like <laughs> sickly cold feeling in your body, like you just. I don't think it's, it's that's for attacks. I think he just looked at me and now. Yeah, he just leaping towards you, just like instilled this curse within you. You feel this like, like instantaneous stomach flu sensation inside your body, like something sickly takes root in your body. And I'll just run up the wall, and as I'm doing it, it's like a, just a, a flail of claws at you in the middle of the air. You're just the closest thing. You do. That's correct. Okay. Uh, that's a 15 to hit. 
Shield. Uh, no, no, I'm just gonna mirror image first. It's a roll. Miss. Miss, great. But one of the duplicates is destroyed. Yep. Uh, 18 to hit. Miss. Next duplicate. Nice. So you just like, <laughs> there were four Ladnas and two of them you strike and they just <laughs> dissipate. Last one. Uh, 14 to hit. That is my armor class. So that would hit. Miss. Awesome. So you just <laughs> strike, all the images are gone, and as you land, <laughs> and like streak your claws <laughs> down the stone and kind of land on the ground below her, still looking up at her, you kind of like just managed to deflect this wave of muscular fur and claws and watch all your images vanish. And then as he lands, it's like yapping, like, like lapping up at you, snarling and snapping from below as you're just like up on the wall. Uh, and I will use my uh, movement to, uh, I'm going to run 45 feet. Jeez, he's traveling. Over here. Oh, oh like no. Damn it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. We're friends. You helped me. You helped me against a bird. Uh, that's my turn. All righty. That brings us to Lawton with FCG on deck. Oh, fuck. Fuck. So, okay, so he didn't get his reach any thingy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we don't know why. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, I'm going to go mm -hmm, another 30 feet up. There's only a, at this edge of the corner, you're pretty much at the ceiling. So you can either go across the ceiling or. Oh, she's 60 laterally. feet up. Because she's further into the cavern. I'm going to then try and just keep well, getting. Well, she's not 60 feet up. She's 40 feet up. She can only get up to where the ceiling is. Yeah, okay. Good. Well, I'm going to keep getting the higher ground, I guess. Okay. Wait, did you do the wisdom fail? So you're moving up, and I'm going to um, hug this wall, I guess. I did this wall here. Oh, God. Yeah. No! It's about there. Sure. What, did, what was the wisdom fail that, that Chetney had that you said you were going to do on his turn? I think that was. The oh, that was him losing the. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. And then. Okay. Can I'm going to try. See? I'm going to try chill touch again. That is the exact same thing I rolled last time, so I don't think that hits. Oof. Unfortunately, really no. Fucking sucks. <sighs> Goes wide. Okay. All right. So that finishes your go. That brings us to FCG with Orm on deck. All right. Foo boy. Look at that thing. Foo boy. Fucking dice are cursed. Um, all right. I will, I will pick up a twig off the ground <laughs> and I will, I will shout a command at oh, Chetney. Don't you do it. Fetch! <laughs> don't you do it! <laughs> Oh this my god. You, you have to save. It's not a very hard save. It's oh a god. wisdom 14 save. I, my wisdom's balls, brother. Uh, is it magic? It is magic. Okay. Yeah, oh. this one's cocked. But. So you, you throw it, bitch! What do you do? <laughs> uh, then I will bonus action from behind. I hope he'll feel a spearing sensation as the as the stake comes flying in yeah. and tries to jab him in the back of the heart. But you can move it. Oh, well, it's not a creature, so it doesn't give you an advantage. So you can just go ahead and take a strike. Okay. Oh, 16 plus six, 22. 22 hits, right? It does. Yeah, okay. let's go ahead and roll your damage. 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier. Six points of damage! No, and it's magic, right? It is. It's silvered, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's magically silvered. <laughs> <laughs> it's radiantly silvered. Indeed. Um, I probably can't move. Can I? So I'm just going to get as close to the statue as possible, just kind of press myself up against her, hoping that he won't attack for fear of damaging the statue. <laughs> Just kind okay. of wrapping my arms around her. You got it, okay. <laughs> On the end of his turn, I'm gonna use the legendary action, and I'm gonna dash uh, 45 feet towards the base of where Imogen is hovering. Fuck you. God damn it. You do can take opportunity if you want. All right, I will And I'll try and get uh, on the opposite side of Imogen from Ashton. Yeah, so I'll here. go up there. As I, I can't cast a spell, right? It has to be a melee thing. Do you have warp caster? No, I okay. don't. Oh. 
Um, if I can hot swap back to a saw blade, I'll, I'll take a saw blade attack. But I'm I, uh, as a reaction, you wouldn't have time to. Yeah. So fast. Uh, what what I have loaded right now is the uh, bolt thrower. Could I shoot at him as he leaves? Or no, it has to be a it's up a, front. Yeah, unfortunately. You just hit so, me. It's all good. Just hit me. I'll hey, unarmed hey. strike him. Do it. Do it. Just punch. Punch him. Three. <laughs> <laughs> you do hit. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> the calves, those calves are amazing. No worries. All right, finishing FCGs go. Orm, you're up with Imogen on deck. <sighs> Shit. Uh, uh, everything I was planning is gone because he moved. Yep. I'm going to use full movement and start on a diagonal towards Chetney Wolf. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. What's your movement? 30. 30 will get you there. Okay. And I'm going to spring from that spot and use the rest of my movement to go all the way up to uh, get right in his grundle, and if you'll allow for flavor, I will just try to hold, like, land against his chest and hold on. All right. Oh, cool. I love it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you just like <laughs> and try and hold on. Yeah. Uh, I will say for the purposes of this, you're just grappling. Yeah. Okay. You're not. This I mean, I'm not grappling. Yeah. I'm not stopping this behemoth from getting anywhere. Yeah. I'll say. I'll say. Yeah. You don't know. We're good. But I'm holding baiting on. him by hanging off of his fucking nips. You got it. Okay, that finishes your go. Imagine you're up with Fern on deck. Okay, I'm gonna. Hmm, I'm gonna look down I'm at. Gonna, hmm, <laughs> look down at. Chet, a Chet. And mentally, I'm gonna say, Chet. fight this. But in your head, you're gonna hear, fight this, fight this, fight this. And it's gonna like echo around in your head, and it's gonna be discordant, dubstep, uh, dissonant whispers. At uh, third level. At third level, okay. Which is a wisdom save. Okay. Uh, it's an 11. You fail it. I'll well, use my last legendary. Nice. Oh. Okay. Burn it, yeah. So that's half of 5d6. <clears throat> oh, oh, I did d4. It's fine, it's fine. I did two d4s last time instead of d6s. Oh. Uh, you know, brilliance. Sometimes life. 10, 13, 17. 17, so that'll bring you to eight. Eight, eight points of exact damage to you. Uh, I'll use my uh, last legendary action of this. Nope, it's just it's still your I'm turn. still my turn. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. And I'm gonna use my full movement of 60 feet to fly to the other side of the chamber. <laughs> okay. <on> the <laughs> mm-hmm. And hold on to the back of the top. <laughs> for oh no, sorry, oh no, Orem. It's fine. All right. <laughs> I knew what I was doing. We cool. I'll, I'll use my legendary action to try and take a swipe at the the small person on my back. <laughs> Go for it. Make oh, a strike. Small. Yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's God. Uh, twenty six. Sure. To yeah. Big time. Okay. Yeah, dude. This is fucking weird. Oh no, not that one. Two, seven. Oh, that's the old six from last time. Uh, th- uh, fourteen points of damage. Yes, sir. That hurts though. Hurt me. <laughs> it hurt you? Yeah. Why? Well, because it. Well, every time I hit with the crimson right, I do the. Oh no, I don't no, do that you, again. I did it the first you time. You do it as soon as you. In- that's right. It's not until my turn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's it. That's my legend. That's my legendary action. Ah, I see. I see. I see. Clarify. Just make sure. Crimson right. You only take the damage when you ignite the first time. Yeah, the very first time. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Okay. That finishes your go. Uh, that brings us now to <laughs> Fern's turn. Have you been doing it every time? I've done it a couple of times. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit oh. happens. Do I? Can I? Can I cast while I'm in wild okay. shape, or I just have my stats in wild shape? You just have your stats in wild shape. Okay, if you want to so cast a spell, you have to get out of wild shape. That's show. right. Okay, so as a bonus action, I'm going to drop my wolf. Okay. My sexy wolf. You got it. And um, there is, uh, there's. There's some. What's in the middle of his chest? The um... there is a dagger that is currently sticking out of it, <laughs> and what looks to be like a continuously smoking plume of red smoke that's kind of like. All right. So as he's I... running across and leaping across, leaving this trail like. I am going to um, step up 
to the, um, a little bit behind that, that, uh, pole, not pole. What's this called? The pillar here? Yes, the thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it starts with a P. Um, and mm. I am going to cast Daylight um, and attach it to the dagger that's in his chest. Ooh! Daylight. Okay. Daylight That's dagger. sexy. That's sexier than a wolf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the dagger in the chest, as you're kind of standing there trying to claw at Orem, uh, suddenly exhibits this extremely bright daylight in the space, and your eyes go white. Orem, you're clutching the fur on the front of the chest, and you just took a hit, Where's and the dagger eyes? that's like a foot from your head that you put in there earlier suddenly just whoosh, just emits this bright like daylight right in your face, and both both of you just have a moment where like you're seeing nothing but but white around you, just Amazing. blinking. That's our druid. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'll say I'll say to the proximity on this. Uh, I'll consider you both blind on the next round, cool. just from the proximity of it. So it's disadvantage on strikes. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So that, that finish your turn. You want to move a little more? My you, turn. Good? you good? No, I'll stay there. All right, Ashton, you're up. How far away does uh, does a uh, um, Chet look at the moment? I'm just peering over. Peering over, Chet, and he looks about sixty feet from you. About cool. sixty feet. Are you still afeard? Yeah, it's about yep. five feet, yeah. I'm just debating whether or not to try and what I can do right now. Okay. I'm just gonna um there's not a lot I can do right now. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna pull around, get a little bit of cover. Okay. Just at the side. Uh I'm going to uh it's gonna be weird. I'm gonna drop rage. Okay. And I'm going to hold my. Uh, I'm gonna basically hold my reaction uh, in case somebody comes within. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, uh, just defensive reaction. I think that you can. You can just take a dodge action, which means attacks against you have disadvantage. Yeah. I'll, well, he's. Yeah. I'll just have that ready to go, just for the because it's gonna take me a round to get my ship back. Okay. And let's try and save. We're gonna make a wisdom sure. save. Come on, don't be a dick. Natural one. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Still afeard. Still afraid of the big bad wolf. All right, Ashton, that finishes your go then? Yeah. Then you can keep moving if you want. Um, if I just get further away, I'm just going to be further away. Uh, so, yeah, further away is further away. I'm just going to. Okay. And if I move, I'm just going to be a fucking target. No worries. Chedney. Yep. You're up. I don't have any regeneration. No, your regeneration is returned. Oh, bummer. Oh, shit. What was it? What did he just regen? That's okay. It's all you want. I keep trying to keep that from happening. Fucking failing. Well, I was going to go after Imogen, but she flew off and had left only this small hero on my chest. Uh, so I'll take three swipes at uh, Orm to try and get, no. <laughs> get him off. At disadvantage, which makes advantage. That's right. That's right. Because you're you're blind. We're both blind. Yep. Uh, Twelve. Nope. Yep. Uh, Sixteen. Nope. Wow. Disadvantage is a problem. Natural twenty and a four for twelve. Ooh. Get wrecked, okay. Wolfgang. <laughs> Nice. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't even know what you're dodging. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like the shield's kind of like almost slung over your shoulder in the back, and you're just like, ping, ping, ping. <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> and as I'm doing it, <laughs> I'll just blindly stumble forward, and I'll come forward 45 feet towards the back of the statue. All right. As you get that close to the statue, and you're about to like seriously lumber into it, Something in your mind goes and tells you to stop, and you actually stop right before crashing into it. Oh. I gotta make, gotta make, make out with the statue. I gotta get that. Uh, that is the end of my turn. All right, that finishes your go. Yep. Ladna, you're up with FCG on deck. The um, hole in the ceiling in which the moon is coming in. The hole yeah. in the ceiling. <laughs> how, 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 how big is it? It's about four feet across. Yes. What? Four feet? Yeah. 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 Do it. Do it. Outside the box. Get crazy. Um. 
I could try and cast darkness over top of that area, or I could try and cover it with my body. You are not you're like a twig. I'm you so are. Excited. Oh, right. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. You're a wicker. Can you form of dread yourself into like a tarp? <laughs> I can. <laughs> you're a really scary type. I am tarp. bigger <laughs> as a form of dread. I do <laughs> extend. Yeah. <laughs> you're still a, you're still a bamboo curtain, man. I'm still a bamboo curtain. I'm going to. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get a little crazy. I'm gonna move towards it. Okay. How long? How far? Skittering uh, my movement, which is 30, 30 feet. feet. There you go. Get close to oh, it. Not entirely. Oh, God. Oh, God. Move this stone. Oh, God. And there we go. Right there. Oh. I am going to cast darkness over the hole to block out the moon. Okay. The sphere of shadow fills and encompasses the ceiling portion. That beam of kind of ever present, sourceless moonlight that was pouring down from the water suddenly vanishes, gets cut off. The water continues to pour out of the black shadow, but the beam of light is gone, and inside the chamber, the only light that's around there are the surrounding sconces in the space. As that, as that happens, Chetney, your form shrinks down to your normal werewolf form. Oh! Um, yes! <laughs> now I've got a baby Bjorn on my. <laughs> are you still a are flashlight? You still by the way? Are you still glowing? Yes. Still glowing, still daylight bursting out of the chest. What's premiering at the Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> it is. So here's the funny part it is a concentration spell. So you lose spider climb? So I lose spider climb. Oh, oh shit! Wait, what? <laughs> so I fall, huh? but I'm going to cast oh, okay. Feather Fall on myself. As a hit, as a reaction. Okay, now. Is that concentration? Can you do? No, no. Yeah. it's a reaction. Can you do a reaction on your turn, though? Oh, but it's like, a spell. immediately after your own spell? Well, if you're falling, that's what triggers a reaction. Oh, I would think so. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh man, we're going to the book for this. We are. Because the action happened first. Yeah, reaction. Falling is after your the, action, and the yeah. reaction is to the after to effect. To the fact that I'm falling. Because there's like enough time there that like, yeah. I would imagine. Uh, reaction. Yeah. Because it's the odd scenario, because normally you cannot, based on the rules as, as I know, I'm aware of, you cannot cast more than one spell in the same turn. But, but it's not the same. Turn, it, it's during your turn that you're oh. falling. Mm. Well, it's, is it after the turn? Although technically, technically, because if that's the end of your turn, the action took the, the whole turn, turn yeah. to cast the the, the darkness move, cast spell. The spell, then the reaction is at the end of your turn. Then yeah, I'll allow it. Okay, nice. So there you go. As you plummet, you land at the bottom. So you're cool. like the the tendrils of your tree-like roots of your form of dread just kind of like unravel and almost grab and <gasps> take root into the ground as you hit. That's cool. I like that flavor. Um, and then I, uh, uh, I've done all the things, so I look around, and I look at Ashton, and I look at Aurum. Help! Mm -hmm. And that's it. All right. At the end of her turn, I'll use a legendary action to dash right at her. Fuck! Uh, can you, are you still blind, or? Uh, no, the blind only was for his, oh, for his round. Okay. Is it light eyes adjusted? Yeah. Attack for opportunity. At uh, disadvantage because I'm blind. Mm -hmm. uh, that but both fifteen. Are you not on anymore? I, I don't. I mean, I think that's only for flavor. I wasn't really. I mean, it depends. If he will let me, I will go. I'll, I'll, I'll allow you. He's still covered in fur, and you're still holding on. If anything, or whatever you want. It's up to you. You can let go and then strike as he runs. You're on there, man. Yeah. No, I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna ride. You're gonna ride. Yeah. 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 All right. So you are just holding on him now, full on baby Bjorn onto. The fuck Chetney. are you doing? <laughs> so is he is still kind of like is Orm in between Chet and I? If hmm? he's like, I would yes, be on he's, he's like right yeah. there as as the wolf comes tearing <laughs> towards you. Um, you ramming attack. Make a wisdom save with Okay. With advantage or straight up? Just straight up. Ten. Ten. Okay. The the light not there, the connection of this kind of flow through of power, this entity that's poured within you, seems to be far lessened in its influence. And you, for a moment, you feel yourself beginning to take control before it pushes through once more, and the feral look continues in your face. Um, 
you know, unable to beat the willpower of the entity at the moment. Okay. All right, FCG. All right, I will uh, start to move my spiritual weapon towards the statue, holding it like at her throat. <laughs> <laughs> and I will, I will cast. I will, I will cast calm emotions on Chetney while I say to him, Chetney, you must recognize the Alpha. Huh? An Alpha is not one who, who draws the most blood. It's one who can control himself, fight through it, and save this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that a wisdom saving throw? It's a wisdom oh, saving. God. I'd say charisma saving. Charisma, throw. even worse. Even worse. Get advantage on that. Natural twenty. Oh, oh no! Oh. Uh, that's a lucky fucking roll. Wow. Is that cocked or too cocked? No, it's not cocked. <laughs> Ah, uh, so that was fucking. <laughs> that was awesome. So uh, as you release the wave of calm emotions, the spell takes hold. And you can see that like mist kind of dissipates for a second before it pulls back in. You can no, it was a charisma saving throw. What? Yes, I do not have advantage on charisma throws. It's okay. just on uh, intelligence and wisdom against magic, not charisma. You sure oh, that? Yeah. that? That's from your uh, hunter's no mobility. Uh, yeah, it's from. Zittle checking here. No, I'm coming advantage on intelligence, wisdom, oh, and charisma saving throws against magic. Yeah. Sorry, it's just not listed on here. It's all good. Mm. Ah, a good try, a good attempt. A good attempt. Calm your shit or the goddess gets it. I won't cut her. Okay. I respect, but, I respect but you, the I respect goddess. While, goddess. While, while the emotions do not immediately calm, you can see this is having a profound effect. You can see the emotional stakes of this is cutting right through, and even though this this bestial, feral urge is still overtaking Chetney's mind, uh, it's doing a it's having a lot more of an effect than some of the damage has had. Okay, okay, it's good. All right, it's good to know. Orem, you're up. Image on deck. Okay, um, I'm going to. I since I've just traveled with him and I felt him shrink, I think maybe the tides are turning here and I heard all that from FCG, so I just take my shield and I just start bashing him in the face. Fucking knock it off! And then I'm going to try to go to attack him just with a shield. You got Disadvantage it. Disadvantage because I'm blind, right? Yes. Ugh, still okay. blind. Still blind. Yeah, because... Uh, it's just the first yeah. round for each of them. Uh, five, so that misses, that's five plus, uh, yeah, that misses. Uh, that is a 18 to hit? Uh, that hits if that's gone. That is gone at the moment. It, 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 that's my AC. Okay, so, that so that's a goading attack, so you just take, the shield will just be one point of damage yes. plus the superiority die is a six, so seven points of damage, and you have to beat a wisdom 16. The shield the is technically attack. magical, so you oh, take the full true. six. The that's full true. six, great, great, great. Mm. Oh. Okay. 19, and then uh, uh, what am I saving against? 16 wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah, uh, 20. Uh, well, that, this is goading is not magical. Oh, so just roll just one. Just roll one. Five. Uh, All right. So. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. So that means oh, any attack against anyone but me is a disadvantage. Oh my god. Does my uh, blindness drop at this point? At the end of your round, it does. End of my round. Okay. So I, I'm not aware of. Uh, I have movement and stuff, but I won't see, and I'd have to move, and then this, then the sight would come back. So I guess I just plop to the ground, and um, that's it. That's the end of the turn. Okay, so yep. you drop down, sight comes All back. Right. End of the turn, I'll use the last legendary action now at disadvantage to take a swipe at Laudna. Go for it. Laudna! Yeah, nailed it. No, that's gonna be a uh, thir 13. Miss? <laughs> first time! Wow, All right. yeah, first time the for The bright everything. shining beacon of the dagger in the middle of the chest, he's still kind of swinging wide and can't quite Make out shapes that are just beyond the reach of the claws, and you just barely like feel it hit one of the hairs in the front of your head that almost like cuts it, and you watch it kind of fitter away. All right, with that, it comes. This, now it is Imogen's go with front on deck. <laughs> oh jeez! All right, I'm gonna fly down to the ground. Turn into a sexy wolf. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Uh, I'm gonna drop fly, and having seen uh, FCG's attempt, I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm gonna hit him with calm emotions again, and just say, uh, Chet, you always brag about how in control you can be. Prove it right now. Stop fighting. Control the beast. You're an MC. A master of control. <gasps> Charisma saving throw with advantage. Okay. Man, natural 19. Oh, God. God. <laughs> what, 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 His are rolls these? are insane. Rolls are 19 don't care. So good though. Dice don't care about your acting. <laughs> That's how it works. You're master of control. I'm death. <laughs> so, but once again, like each one of these moments, there is a flickering moment where you can see the like the rage begin to subside before it <laughs> rears back up inside. That finishes your turn, Mission. Um, All right, Fern, you're up. Okay. Astronaut deck. Um, I am going to. Yes, charm person. Hey, you're gonna fight this, okay? You're hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know, but you really need to fight. <laughs> okay, continue. Well, you're looking in your book for something. No, continue. Charm effect or something. Oh, yeah, is he immune to charm? Right Who knows, now. we'll see. Keep going, keep going. You're, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. Confirming that lycanthropes in their form are still considered humanoids, which I believe uh, they oh, were, oh, but I just oh, wanted oh. to double check. Oh, nice. Okay, so uh, you have to make a, a wisdom, to be 16. Okay. Yeah. Ah, shit. Okay. Jesus Christ, dude! Natural. What Can't the stop. fuck? Can't stop this one. Not natural 19 and a 1, so we're getting worse. But. It's okay. <laughs> As all of you have kind of slowed down the energy of, the, of this, and you're all like slowly encroaching upon him, and just one after another trying to appeal to this, this, this mind that is locked behind this influence of the spirit, and it just continues to fight back and fight back. It's it's having a harder time with each element. It's being whittled down. Does that finish your turn? I can't bonus action a flame blade, can I? Because that's a unfortunately no. Because we yeah, two yeah, spells okay, in one yeah, round. Yeah, 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 that's it. All right, Ashton. I assume that the fear is somehow still up, even though the, Correct. there's the now effect a maintains. fucking <laughs> Sorry. Be on this the damn thing. Fear ever. I, I, it's the problem with low wisdom. Yeah, low wisdom characters. At every round, yeah, um, I'm visible now. I suppose to you are. Um, fuck it. Um, I'm just gonna turn, look straight on, and come on, Chet. This is bullshit. <laughs> knock it off, and if you're not gonna knock it off, come here and let's. Fucking do this because Fuck. they don't deserve it. Fucking do this. Make an intimidation check. You have to come to me though, because yeah. I, 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 I can't. Oh, I can't. I'm just, I'm just, I I'm also, totally, I totally want to fight. Yeah. I also have no rage right now. Oh no. Make an intimidation. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Fuck me. Uh, <laughs> 24. Wow. To yes. 24 intimidation. Oh, oh, There's like little sparks going off and shit. Should it make a wisdom saving throw? That's not magic. Nope. Nope. This is shit. Four! <laughs> Through all the appeals to emotion, all the appeals to, to find friendly connection, all chipping away at this boundary until eventually the, the wall that this spirit that has possessed you has put between you and your companions through this trial, through the crack, in the middle of this central barrier, another beast <laughs> meets you eye to eye. Alpha to alpha. And beseeches you to show your true strength. Please describe to me as you how you oh. regain yourself. Oh! oh! Yeah, you want to subdue this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at uh, uh, Ladna just getting ready to tear her to ribbons, and then I hear Ashen. <laughs> Let's do this. Wait, what? Oh no. 
<laughs> can I go and drop down to? Can I drop the hybrid form? Yes, you can. Oh my god. Oh my god. Not for nothing, but I'm pretty sure you were gonna be fucked. Uh-huh. Um. I'm gonna slowly walk up to him. Come here. <laughs> oh. Boom! Right oh, in the face. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 fucking. Oh, your hand is made of rocks. <laughs> Fuck my nose. Ah. You are cool now. We're cool. A resounding echo of laughter begins to fill the chamber as all of the Gorgine, no longer held by the spectral spirit, begin to laugh at what they just saw. I'm going to fall over now. Yeah. <laughs> As you lie there on your back and the eyes tense, the dagger is still protruding from your chest. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> oh, oh. Do you oh, maintain? Hold on. Do you maintain the daylight spell? It's so bright. No, I'll take it. Down. Okay. As the daylight spell <laughs> diminishes and the light diminishes, you do you keep the darkness spell? I, 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 I looking at Chetney. You, you're good. You sure you're good? Uh. If I if I let the moon in, will you be all right? What? Why would you do that? I don't know. I just, uh. Maybe just hold it. I'll hold it for a little while <laughs> longer, just to be sure. Okay. Can I pull this fucking dagger out of yes, my chest? Yes, you can. Ah! Oh god! Right. You pull the dagger free, and you all watch as a splash of crimson comes oh. emerging from it. Oh. Uh, but it kind of just drifts there. It is a red spectral mist that just kind of begins to drift and emanate out. As this happens, the darkness spell oh. dissipates. Oh. And the light continues back in to fill the chamber. I didn't do that. As this light begins to swell and fill the space around you with a, a bright blue midnight light, the Series of emotions fill your head once more, saying, I eat of the scar of an unworthy predator and leave my scar in its place. You are a hunter, and the wilds wait with you to be unleashed. And you watch, almost like drawing the venom from a wound, this red energy just kind of drifts out. And you watch as this kind of cloud of red drifts there for a second, and for a moment, it almost resembles a familiar ruddy moon before it dissipates. You kind of sit there on the ground, breathing heavily with an open wound in your chest. Oh. Need, need some cure, some curatives? I'm leaking. All right, here. You're not gonna hurt me, are you? I don't think so. Oh, shit me. <laughs> Help me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> don't do that! Don't do that! Sorry, <laughs> sorry, there's a little oh. residual in there. Fuck, that was awesome. I'm gonna do it again. Okay. <laughs> don't scare me again. Cure wounds. Oh! <laughs> you get two hit points for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like Manon, sports massage. Six hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Manon kind of steps up from the side and is like, Well, as I, the spirit really enjoyed fucking with you for a bit, so that's something new. Oh, is that typical? I mean, occasionally it's done strange things, made people duel it off. Sometimes they have to go off and hunt something and bring it back. It changes from person to person. Whatever you had in you, you, uh, I guess you had to. Deal with tensions with your allies here and come to an understanding, whatever that interpretation means. Yeah. Sorry. That was incredibly brave what you did. I could see it. You jumped in. I was gonna, and you. You think uh, going forward you got more of a handle on things? I don't know. I think only time will tell. Maybe we go by the, uh, you know, chain me up protocol, visitors welcome. But hopefully <laughs> there's, you know, something to be gained from all this. Have my knife. Oh! Yep. 
<laughs> um, everybody okay? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I felt alive. like it was a dream. I thought I was like bigger and more muscly and like you were hotter huge. than ever. Okay. Yeah, it was really, really intense. Amazing. Four to five yeah. times larger than normal. It Young, virile. I felt like you guys were coat. shooting shit at me, and I was like, "Nah, bitch." Yeah. And then you do it again, and it'll be like, "I don't think so." Yeah, and you could heal yourself. I haven't been that scared in ages. Yeah. I was yeah. like, "Not today, Miss <laughs> Arnold." Yeah. Class dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> One more, come on. Bulls out for summer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is that? Is that? I wonder if that's like your new thing. You're just really. Awesome. Just like big. Yeah, there we are. No, no, I don't think so. I think that was probably the spirit. By the way, I look around. Uh, 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 whatever the hunter's bane. Uh, is there any uh, fey fiends undead? Anything else in this this room? Uh, make a perception check for me. Oh, I'm using that. Uh, that's cock. Natural twenty. <laughs> Natural twenty for twenty-one. Okay. You, you do not sense any fey. I know, you know the same time. Five or six. It's crazy. Dice fiends or undead in the vicinity, which is comforting. Um, but still, kind of as you glance around, you look up and you can still see that, like that mist that is pouring from where the water is trickling down past the statue. And you still kind of feel that, that presence. Though you do not feel it within you, you do not feel that. Uh, that untethered, feral nature within, it never left the chamber. Oof. Chetney. Yeah? Where are you looking? Up there. Is it your destiny? <laughs> no, FCG. That's in here. Oh. A gentle wind blows oh. through from above. <laughs> <Jeez. No. laughs> <laughs> and that that awkward itch that you've been combating in <laughs> up in the grundle, no, in the <laughs> that that <laughs> oh, <it> hurts. <laughs> that um, what is that rash, Jim? <laughs> it's only one of you. That ever ever present worry since that moment that the red moon looked back. That anxiety seems to have been lifted, unstitched. That would be clutch. That would be really good. Yeah, it's still going to be chained me up at nights. Got a feeling. Got a feeling. Uh, at this point, Annalyn approaches and goes, if you feel it is necessary, but uh, from what I could gather from my oddly peripheral watching position, Not everyone would be eager to calm a beast of your size beyond slay it. Yeah, they're pretty great. I have a fucking terrible hunger after that. I'm a little hungry too. Actually. You want to eat one of these guys? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Can we eat the hot one? Sorry, sorry. Which, they're all at the hot one. I was just hoping Chet. someone else would decide. Chet, all your clothes and underwear are over here split to smithereens. I don't know if Lola oh, can no, mend them it. or... I didn't account for being so hot! Yeah, you are You are just flapping the breeze Why right not? here. Try not to be too impressed. <laughs> it's weird that the hat made it through, but everything else. <laughs> just the hat. Just the hat. Can you just move the hat to the, you know? No, Nod I don't goes, think I will. No. <laughs> Nod goes, well, if you're hungry, I'll go hunting. I'll leave you to your business here and oh. head outside. So the other Gorgine kind of chuckled for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> and then your gloves. Oh, good. <laughs> Faster. Yeah. And my pride. I can do that. <laughs> I just I take pate and have him help me do like a little Cinderella like mice stitching. Oh my God. 
situation with the scrap of his clothes, yes. They're not perfect, but there you go. <laughs> I'll wander up to the statue and just kind of look up and go, thank you. As you kind of glance up towards the moonlight, as it kind of crosses into your face, in the beams, while it doesn't, it's not blinding by any means, there's a, a refraction where you almost see the face of some sort of a, a snouted creature, like some spectral wolf, but it's also not a wolf, it's many creatures. It, it kind of shifts as you kind of glance at it, as it looks down at you, and you just feel this sense of pride. Like the end of Fantastic Mr. Fox, he sees the wolf in the distance. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool, Daddy. Huh? You know what we should do? We should all strip down and run through the woods. It'll be exhilarating. That actually sounds like a blast. I don't wear clothes. Yep. Listen, this is a this is a team bonding exercise. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Who's with me? I'm in. I'm in. I'll lead the way. You all right. Tally ho! <laughs> there he goes. I'll just take yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get him down. All right. Oh, yeah. You want to find a Twilight Panther? Oh, yeah. That's how you find it. Like, really that's how I fucking find it. Yeah. We, we all get him. naked. We all get naked and run out after him. All right. So all of you just start dropping and running. Oh, fuck uh, I will say. Everybody's, everybody's clothes just goes into the portable hole. <laughs> And Fern runs with the portable. <laughs> I'll say, uh, Orem, as they're as they're engaging in this chaos, and you're contemplating jumping in with the rest of them, the breeze is still kind of blowing through. Um, an odd scent seems to come through the chambers. It's familiar, very faint, and emotions come over you as you recognize a scent you haven't smelled in a long time. It's the faintest scent of will, his skin. Just that natural scent. It's been a long time and sudden memories kind of wash over you for a second. Why do you smell that now? Why? Little perception check. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. You, you turn around and you kind of glance back at the statue, and you s swear for just an instant, like it, it seemed like it was emanating from that, but now it's almost gone and fading. It's odd. I'm, I'm a, totally left alone here. Did the the whole pack leave as well? They're all starting to like disrobe and run. Yeah, and you're just kind of like about to dive in before you kind of. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And look towards it. Look um, at her fern as she. Are you naked at this point? No, 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 not no. yet. <laughs> the moonlight seems to be almost haloing the statue before you. You see her kind of just the statue there, kind of this gentle, matronly smile, clutching that sheath to her chest. There's a, a unique element that you, as you look back down at the statue, there are these small growths like vines that are just kind of emanating from the top of the sheath. That she's holding? Yeah. Like it's just like something that's rooted in and growing. Um. I see everyone's filing out, Fern waiting at the entrance. I'll get closer, try to understand what I'm seeing better. Okay, it's a little high up there. That's the problem. So, <laughs> kind of leap and perch onto the statue, and it is, you know, it's a, it's a sizable statue. Stone carries your light form without issue, but as you stand over, the sheath she, that she's clutching indeed has an opening. I look at the width of the sh sheath. <laughs> I 
it slides into it. The sheath looks like it's a little too big for your sword, but the sword fits into the space there. As it kind of, the hilt of it clicks into where the top of the sheath would be, the vines begin to wrap and grow rapidly, surrounding the handle of the blade, surrounding the top of the sheath, wrapping up and almost touching and wrapping around your hand, oddly warm to the touch, and you see this faint green light begin to just emanate from the gaps around it. And the light fades. And your arm is now, your hand around the handle of the blade is now wrapped in vines and ivy. Try to gently pull free. As you pull it free, the ivy kind of just gently pulls away, like very little resistance. And as you draw your blade out, you can see the the blade looks the same, um, but as you kind of still grip it in your hand, the hilt of it, ivy grows from it, and continues to wrap around your blade like a hand guard. As you look it over, faintly you see this kind of emerald energy, this like faint magical field kind of drift across the edge of it. Nice. I assume I'm sort of on the statue's shoulder, looking right at her face. I'll just bow my head. I don't know why, but I'm grateful all the same. Thank you, Saratani. I got that name right? Mm -hmm. I'll take one last look up at the moonlight coming in, and then I'll leap down, drop, and look at Fern. Come on, we gotta go. I start taking off my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and a little three foot three naked guy with a shield and a brand new sword just starts <laughs> running out. I'm gonna walk up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm gonna take a platinum out of my oh. fur. <laughs> My marsupial pouch. <laughs> and I'm just gonna roll it across my fingers. Um Hey, thanks. And then flick it. <laughs> that was fun. Bye. <laughs> you hear Orm's voice from down the the passageway. Are you streaking with me or what? Yes, hold on, jeez. <laughs> As the collection of Bell's Hells go charging off into the evening moonlight, nude as they choose to be. Nude the moonlight. <laughs> 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 We're going to go ahead and finish the episode there. Um, couple Good fun game. things. You level up. Uh, so everyone's level eight. Yes. Oh, and, shit. Uh, okay. You notice a new feat under your feet it's called Savage Spirit. <gasps> Savage Spirit. Oh, what? Three feet now. And wow. you mm. need to figure out the name for your sword. Oh. You get to name your blade. Wow. Yeah. Magic sword. Magic, Magic sword. sword. Oh, Magic is sword. Is that the name? <laughs> magic, sword. <laughs> magic, sword. magic sword, magic sword, sword magic sword. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do we, are we rolling now, or we do that some other time? We can do it now while we're here if you want to. Or do you, you, you want to take some time to think on it? Yeah, I gotta think. Well, it's just start, I mean, like, it's oh yeah, because someone might multi. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll take some time to think on it since yeah. you got a little time in case okay. anyone wants to multi class, uh, and we'll uh, put that up when it's time. But I'm so excited! I'm so excited. In the interim. Thank you all so much for joining us. We love you very much, and is it Thursday? Yeah. Good night. Yay!